Bonsoir à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent while you sleep. I would advise you to turn your mobile phone or tablet so that the light doesn't disturb you while you sleep and the lesson will start right now. Les démonstratifs. Les démonstratifs, so we'll see two type of demonstrative. The first one will be adjectif demonstratif, okay? And then the second one will be pronom demonstratif. All right, so let's start. So we'll see for the adjective demonstratif, the masculine singular form, feminine singular form, masculine plural form, and then feminine plural form, okay? Masculin singulier, féminin singulier, masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. So let's see how they are. So when we talk about les démonstratifs, technically it would be translated in English like this. Okay, uh, but then of course we've got in French the difference between the masculine and the feminine form, and then masculine plural and feminine plural. Okay, so we'll see them now. The first one, so for the masculine, so this this okay adjective will be translated in French with ce, so it's the basic form or set. Okay, so you will have to use this second option here, this set, when you will have a name or a noun after that will start whether with a vowel or then with H plus a vowel. Okay, remember this H letter in French is not really pronounced, okay, so it does it does indicate to you that well, when you get the, a word starting with the, the sound of a vowel, then you will have to use this set adjective okay and then feminine form is set like that so it's quite interesting because if you listen carefully the masculine form here set and the feminine form here set you write them differently but then you pronounce them the same way all right for the plural form so masculine plural it would be se okay and then feminine plural Good news, it's the same. So we've got one form here, se, and the option set, when you've got a noun starting with a vowel after, and then set, feminine form, and for the plural, you've got only one form, okay, and it's se. Okay, remember, open, se, 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 okay? One example, se livre. So, this book, okay, livre is book, uh, here livre is masculine, so you will have to use the se, okay, and then it doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so it's the basic se, this book, se livre. And now we've got ordinateur, ordinateur is a masculine word, means computer, okay, but then if you look carefully, it starts with Oh, okay, a vowel. So this se ordinateur wouldn't be possible. So we've got to use the second option, as we saw previously. So it's set, written like that. Okay, set ordinateur. This computer. Third possibility here, we've got homme, man. Okay, uh, but then O is here. We've got this. Ash letter, remember, ash is not pronounced, okay? So you get the sound of O at the beginning of this word, okay? Setum, so that's the reason why you will have to use the set. So it's masculine, but still setum. So now, feminine word, femme, woman. No problem about that because we've got only one option for this at the feminine form and it's set written like that. Set femme. Same thing here if you've got a word like organisation, well it's the same in English. So it starts with a vowel but it doesn't change anything for the feminine uh, demonstratif here. Okay? Set organisation. Set organisation. And then plural, 
So whether it's masculine, so we've got friends here at the masculine form, so masculine plural, and then friends here at the feminine plural form, okay? But then the adjective demonstratif here, as you can see, will be the same. Ses amis, ses amis. All right? And it's quite funny in a way because if you only listen to these two things, here, ses amis, and then ses amis, you don't have really any phonetical um, information regarding the fact whether it's masculine or feminine. That's the way it is. Sorry about that. But, so let's continue now with uh, le demonstratif. So we'll see now uh, the pronouns. Okay, so same thing. We'll see the masculin singulier, then féminin singulier, then masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. Okay, so pronouns. Okay, so it does mean that you'll have to use these pronouns instead of the name. Okay, so for the masculine form, we'll have celui-ci and then celui-là okay so we'll see the difference of use but then celui-ci celui-là uh, in english it would be directly translated as this one okay so you don't want to repeat uh, the name or uh, the thing that was previously stated so you use this this one okay in english it's easier in french it's a bit more tricky because we will have this celui okay and then si and la, so you'll see that normally si is coming first and then la is coming next, okay? Celui-ci, celui-là, this one, all right? Same thing with uh, the feminine form, celle-ci, celle-là, all right? And then for the masculine plural, ceci. Okay, remember, final X is not pronounced, so you get the sound ce, ceci, and then cela. All right, feminine plural, celle-ci, okay, don't pronounce the final S, celle-ci, celle-là. All right, so let's see a few examples now. So if you ask a question, quel est mon livre? Okay, what is my book or which one is my book? All right, and then the answer could be votre livre, your book, c'est celui-ci, this one. Okay, votre livre, c'est celui-ci. Okay, and then normally when you talk or when you say that, you tend to indicate that with your finger as well. So you point the book, votre livre, c'est celui-ci. Où est ma place? Where is my seat? Où est ma place? C'est celle-là. Okay, same thing. You tend to point it at the same time. Okay, c'est celle-là. All right. So you get to remember that we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine. Okay, so singular and plural, and then we'll have the difference between this C, okay, the first option, the nearest one, okay, and then this LA, second option, so it's not the nearest one, okay. La description avec C. So let's start. So if you want to use this C option to make a description, so C technically would be directly translated as as it is or this is, okay? But then in French, you will have to add after that the adjective, but the adjective should be all the time at the masculine form, okay? So remember, if you want to describe something, okay, you can use this C, and that's really, you know, a common way to, to, to describe things, okay? It is, this is, but then remember the adjective that will come after should be at the masculine form. Okay, so we'll see a few examples now. And the first one would be the option to, to uh, describe uh, un lieu, a place. Okay, so let's see. Now, c'est chaud. Okay, it is hot. Warm. Huh? 
could be an option as well. C'est chaud, it's warm, okay? C'est froid, cold. It is cold. C'est beau, beau is beautiful, okay? And then c'est tranquille, quiet, okay? So what you can see here is that we've got adjectives like chaud, froid, beau, and then tranquille. They are all at the masculine form, okay? Even if, I mean, the place uh, would be feminine and you want to describe it, remember that it should be all the time at the masculine form, okay? Let's see another example. So if you want to describe a situation, for instance, okay? It would be an option. So, ideal, ideal, c'est ideal. Formidable, c'est formidable. C'est Parfait. So it's perfect. And then c'est injuste. Injuste, the opposite is of uh, ju juste. Okay? And it's not fair, unfair. Okay? So c'est idéal, c'est formidable, c'est parfait, c'est injuste. Same thing here. Okay? Remember that all these adjectives are at the feminine form. Okay? Let's continue now. And see, so it could be uh, for an object as well. You could describe an object, an objet. So let's see now. C'est cher. Cher is expensive. C'est cher. C'est utile. Utile, useful. C'est beau. Beautiful. C'est adapté. Adapted. Okay. C'est cher. C'est utile. C'est beau. C'est adapté. Remember, all these adjectives are at the feminine oh sorry the masculine form i'm getting tired now all right so at the masculine form like i did say previously okay so let's see now another option so if you want to describe a dish okay you're eating and you want to describe a dish un plat okay so c'est très bon okay très is very and then bon is good okay c'est très bon C'est bon marché. Bon marché, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, this adjective here, so it's a composed adjective, and it means cheap. Okay, c'est bon marché. C'est salé. So remember, it's quite important because we've got the same adjective here without the accent. So if you don't put the accent, it means dirty, and then you pronounce it sale. But in that case here, okay, you put the accent and it's quite important because in that case it means salted, okay? Salé, okay? C'est salé. C'est délicieux. C'est délicieux, okay? And then same thing here, if you look all these adjectives, they are at the masculine form, okay? So... The second option would be to put this structure at the negative form, which is not that difficult because technically you just keep, well, your structure, you just add as usual the first ne and then pa before and after the verb, okay? Then, same thing here, you will put this adjective at the masculine form, okay? So we will basically just see one more time all the examples we had previously, but then at the negative form. So, if you want to describe a place, ce n'est pas chaud, ce n'est pas froid, ce n'est pas beau, ce n'est pas tranquille. Situation, ce n'est pas idéal, ce n'est pas formidable. Ce n'est pas parfait. Ce n'est pas injuste. An object. Ce n'est pas cher. Ce n'est pas utile. Ce n'est pas beau. Ce n'est pas adapté. And then a dish. Ce n'est pas très bon. Ce n'est pas bon marché. Ce n'est pas salé. Ce n'est pas délicieux.
la salle de séjour. So let's start now. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. So remember, it's a bit tricky, this word. Fauteuil. Teuil. Fauteuil. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. OK, one more time. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier. OK, one more time. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier. Le sol. La table, le tapis, le canapé, la bibliothèque, One more time. le sol, la table, le tapis, Remember final S not pronounced. le tapis, le canapé, la bibliothèque. La cuisine. So in the previous lesson we were in the, la salle de séjour and now we're still in the house but it's la cuisine. So let's discover what we have. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur. Le frigo. L'évier. L'étagère. OK, so let's repeat them. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur. Le frigo. L'évier. L'étagère. L'égouttoir. L'armoire murale. Le four. La cuisinière. Le lave-vaisselle. OK, let's see them one more time. L'égouttoir. L'armoire murale. Le four. La cuisinière. Le lave-vaisselle. Le chauffe-eau. La théière. La cafetière. La louche. L'entonnoir. OK, let's see them one more time. Le chauffe-eau. La théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir, le décapsuleur, l'ouvre-boîte, le tire-bouchon, le presse-citron. La passoire. All right, let's repeat them together. Le décapsuleur. L'ouvre-boîte. Le tire-bouchon. Le presse-citron. La passoire. La râpe. Le couteau, 
le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie, ok, let's see when. la râpe, le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie, les fruits et Legumes, so fruits and vegetables. So I hope you're ready because we are starting right now. Les fruits. L'orange. So I did put this little F just to indicate you that it's feminine. Okay? L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon, ok, so, les fruits, l'orange, la pomme, la pêche, le melon, l'ananas, le pamplemousse, la pastèque, la banane, la figue. Right. L'ananas, le pamplemousse, la pastèque, la banane, la figue, la prune, la mandarine, le citron, l'abricot, la cerise. La prune, la mandarine, le citron, l'abricot. So by the way, I didn't put it, but it's masculine, just for your information. La cerise, la poire, le raisin, le marron, la date. La poire, le raisin, le marron, la date, les baies, la fraise, la framboise, la groseille à macro, la groseille rouge. I just noticed that I've been making a little mistake here. Sorry about that. Les baies, la fraise, la framboise, la groseille à macro, la groseille rouge, la myrtille, la mûre des marais, la canneberge, le cassis, l'airelle rouge, la myrtille, la mûre des marais, la canneberge, le cassis, l'airelle rouge, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, l'oignon, le chou. 
le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, so for your information, artichaut is masculine, l'oignon, same thing for oignon, is mascu it's masculine, le chou, la tomate, le chou-fleur, la pomme de terre, le poivron, l'aubergine, la tomate, le chou-fleur, la pomme de terre, le poivron, l'aubergine. For your information, aubergine is a feminine word. L'épinard, le fenouil, le champignon. L'épinard, so it's masculine, le fenouil, le champignon. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to learn French with Vincent. This is unité 6, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll discover together les Comparatif. So if you want to compare in French, well, this is the lesson you should definitely watch. So in this structure, in this lesson, sorry, we'll discover three type of structures. The first one, avec un nom, with a noun. Second one, avec un adjectif, with an adjective. And the last one, avec un verbe with a verb. Okay, so if you want to compare with these structures, then we'll start with the first one, avec un nom. Okay, so if you want to compare with a noun, then remember that if you want to say more, then you will have to use this plus, de, and then here you will put your noun, after that followed by que, than, and the rest of the structure. Okay, let's see one example. J'ai plus de chance que vous. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Okay. Chance is luck. Okay. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Vous is you. All right. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Amis, friends. Nous, nous avons plus de livres que. Nous avons plus de livres que. Okay, so if I want to be really honest, and I will be, um, there is a strange thing in French language with this plus. Okay, because in some cases you will have to pronounce the final S, and in other cases you won't. So, what I would advise you to do, because uh, we are at a beginning stage, um, it would be to pronounce it each time, especially with this type of structure. So, if you want to construct it followed by a noun, then in that case, my advice would be pronounce it. Okay. After that, if you get the chance to go in uh, French-speaking countries or meet French-speaking persons, then you can listen to them and you will learn how to use it or not. Okay. But the first advice would be, if you are using this kind of uh, structure with nouns, then pronounce it. Okay. So let's see now if you want to say as. Okay. So if you want to compare, so it would be autant de followed by the noun, then with this que, then, and you continue your structure, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Okay, so I kept exactly the same uh, sentences, just to make it more clear, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Okay, so as usual in French, you know, you get this de here, but then if the word, you know, coming right after is starting with a vowel or h, h plus a vowel, then you should definitely take this e uh away, okay? Il a autant d'amis que moi. Nous avons autant de livres que, okay? And then same thing here, as you can see here, you get this que, okay, but then followed by a vowel, in that case, a uh, needs to go 
away and then you get this que. All right. Then if you want to say less, it's moins in French. So no discussion about the S here. Don't pronounce it. Okay. Moins de. And then you put your noun que, than, and the rest of the structure. So let's see. J'ai moins de chance que vous. J'ai moins de chance que vous. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Nous avons moins de livres que. Nous avons moins de livres que. All right? So that's it. Now let's see if you want to compare and use a structure with an adjective. Donc avec un adjectif. Okay? First structure if you want to use this more. Okay? So you will use this plus. And in that case you don't pronounce the S. Okay? Plus. Then you put your adjective. And after that, you put this que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so let's see now. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Rapide is fast. Okay. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Fort is strong. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes... Plus intéressé que vous. Okay, and in that case, well, you make this little link, little liaison between the two, so you hear a little bit this S. Okay, nous sommes plus intéressé que vous. All right, so let's see them one more time. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressé que vous. All right, and then aussi. Then you put your adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so the same examples. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. Okay, so I'll repeat them. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. All right. And then, moins, same thing here, remember, we don't pronounce the final S. Then you put the adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. Ok, one more time. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. All right. And so the last structure, if you want to compare with a verb, then in that case, remember, plus will be with the S. So pronounce it, plus que. Ok, let's see now. Elle parle plus que toi. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. And then, autant que. All right. So it goes like, elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons Autant que vous. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons autant que vous. And the last one. Moins que. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange moins que son frère. 
nous voyageons moins que vous. One more time. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange moins que son frère. Nous voyageons moins que vous. And this is it. Okay. The next lesson is here on YouTube slash Imagier. And then the website is here. Imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together. Let me click. <laughs> Le passé composé of the verb faire. Faire is to do and then we'll see together the passé composé form. So we, we, we did introduce the passé composé in the unit 5. Okay, but I just want to check and uh, make it clear that everything is okay for you. So we'll start with faire. It will be quite fast but still quite useful. Let's start. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Vous avez fait. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right. So to make it clear, one more time, remember that in most of the cases for the passé composé, you will have to use avoir at the present form, followed by this participe passé form. So if you're not sure how to construct that, Check uh, Unité 5 and then uh, you will see the, the, the lesson that explains everything. Okay, but then we'll repeat it one more time. J'ai fait. So remember, final T is not pronounced. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Little link between the two. Nous avons. Nous avons fait. Same thing here. Vous avez fait. And same thing here. Ils ont. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right? So that's it. It was the verb. Faire at the passé composé. Really important. If that's okay with you and if it's clear, then you can continue. And the website is youtube.com slash imagier. Or then more material, imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Well, basically it's for important verbs. And this one, venir, to come. Is quite important, especially because it's a bit tricky in a way. So we'll see why. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venue. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus. Elles sont venues. Okay, so if you remember carefully when we introduced the uh, passé composé uh, construction in the unit 5, I told you that most of the verbs uh, were constructed with avoir, but then we had the list of the verbs that requires this être verb. Venir is among them, okay, so that's the reason why you put être here at the present form, okay, and then remember that if you get to put être, then have a look. At the feminine form here, you will have to add this final E, okay, feminine singular, but then for the plural form, you will have to add this S here, here, okay, and then for the feminine plural, you will have to add this E, S. All right, but then the good news, there is a good news, yes, <laughs> it's that uh, you, you don't pronounce them, so basically you get the pronunciation venu, 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 and then the same thing, venu, you don't pronounce this final E. Venu, you don't pronounce the final S. Venu, you don't pronounce it, the final S either. Same thing here, venu, and same thing here, venu, you don't pronounce a S. So phonetically, you only have one way to pronounce it, but remember, if you want to write correctly, you will have to put E for the feminine, S for the plural, a s for the feminine plural. Okay, let's repeat them one more time. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venue. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. 
Ils sont venus, elles sont venues. So we'll see together uh, le passé composé form of pouvoir, pouvoir, can. And then uh, we'll see how it goes at the past form, this uh, passé composé form. Okay, so j'ai pu, tu as pu, il a pu, elle a pu, nous avons pu, vous avez pu, ils ont pu, elles ont pu. Okay, so if you remember carefully, as I said, uh, in unit 5, when I introduced this uh, passé composé form, most of the verbs are using avoir at the present form, so that's the case here. And then after that, you've got to put the participe passé. Same thing, it was introduced in unit 5, so check it if you want. And then for pouvoir, it's a bit tricky because pouvoir becomes pu like that. Only two letters, okay? But then it doesn't change. If you look carefully, then it's always the same form. Okay, so let's see them together. J'ai pu. Tu as pu. Remember, you don't pronounce the S here. Il a pu. Elle a pu. Nous avons pu. Little link, little liaison between the two. Nous avons pu. Vous avez pu. Same thing here. Little liaison between the two. Ils ont pu. Same thing here. Elles ont pu. Le passé composé, and the verb is attendre. Attendre is to wait. Okay, and so we'll see the past form. So it's just some reviews that we are doing, uh, but they are really important. So let's see how it goes now. J'ai attendu. Tu as attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu, ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. Alright, so if you remember, when I introduced the passé composé form, I told you that most of the verbs are using this avoir verb at the present form and then the participe passé. Okay, in that case, attendre becomes attendu at the participe passé and then that's the form you will have to add at the end and it doesn't change here. As you can see, j'ai attendu, tu as attendu, il a attendu, elle a attendu, nous avons attendu, so two liaisons here, nous avons attendu, nous avons attendu, vous avez attendu, same thing here, vous avez attendu, ok, vous avez attendu, then same thing here, ils ont attendu, ok, liaison here as well. Ils ont attendu, ok, but make it fast. Ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. Le passé composé of répondre, répondre is to answer, and it's quite useful. So let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu, ils ont répondu, elles ont répondu. Alright, so it's not that difficult. Keep in mind that répondre, so the infinitive form, becomes répondu at the participe passé form. Okay, so the, this form that you will have to add each time here doesn't change. You know, you don't put the mask, you don't put, sorry, the feminine form or the plural form. You just keep it like that. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu. Ils ont répondu. Elles ont répondu. Okay? Le passé composé, but this time it will be for the verb partir. Partir is to leave. Okay? And then you will see that it goes like that. Je suis parti. Tu es parti. Il est parti. Elle est partie. Nous sommes partis, vous êtes partis, ils sont partis, elles sont partis. Okay, remember, 
partir belongs to this group of verbs that requires to use être instead of avoir for the passé composé form. And for that reason, you will have here, for example, when you've got the feminine form, you will have to put this final e uh, at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? If that's plural, like it is here, you will have to add s, okay? And it's if it's feminine plural, you will have to add this e s at the end of your participe passé form. But um, when it comes to uh, phonetics, so what you will pronounce, the good news is that you won't pronounce these e s or e s. Okay, so it will go like parti, parti, and then here, same thing, parti, parti, and parti. Okay, so phonetically it's not that difficult, but then if you want to write correctly, remember to put E for the feminine form, S for the plural form, ES for the feminine plural form. Okay, so let's see that together. Je suis parti, tu es parti, il est parti, elle est parti, nous sommes parti. Vous êtes parti, ils sont parti, elles sont parti. Ok? That's it. YouTube.com slash Imagier. Next lesson is waiting for you. And then the website is here. www.imagier.net Au revoir. Le passé composé of the verb savoir. Savoir is to know. It's quite used and quite useful. Okay? But then keep in mind that this lesson regarding passé composé is the last one. Okay? So if you're not sure how to make it, remember that in Unit 5 I did a big, big, big lesson regarding le passé composé. And then in Unit 6, few verbs were, uh, well, it was possible to see them. Okay? But then after that, we won't see le passé composé Again. All right, so let's start now. Le passé composé, savoir, goes like J'ai su. Tu as su. Il a su. Elle a su. Nous avons su. Vous avez su. Ils ont su. Elles ont su. All right, so for the last time, in most of the cases for the verbs, we will use avoir and then we'll use the participe passé form. In that case, savoir becomes su. Okay, so that's the reason why that's the form that you will see at the end of each forms here. Okay, and then avoir should be at the present form. All right, j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su. Vous avez su, ils ont su, elles ont su. Futur, simple. So basically it's the future tense, okay? When you want to express something that you will do. Let's see how we will make it in French. So we'll see the difference between the through, uh, sorry, the three groups of verbs that we've got in French. The first one, first group, is ending with uh, air. Remember, parler, to talk, to speak. So, the idea is that in that case, for this group, you don't change anything. So, you just keep the basic form, the infinitive form, all right? And after that, you will put at the end a e for je. Okay, so this will be your ending. So, you just don't touch the verb, I mean, don't touch the infinitive form, you just put at the end this ending, okay? Second group of verbs, finir, to finish, to end. Well, the good news is that it will behave the same way as for the first group of verbs. You don't modify anything, you just keep your infinitive form and you will put the ending, ae, here as well. So you get, je parlerai, and then you will get, je finirai. So it's not that difficult for these two first group, okay? The third group, it's a bit more tricky, of course, as usual, because we're talking about irregular verbs, okay? But still, I took this lire. Lire is to read, okay? And then you can see that it's ending with this uh, so the vowel uh, okay? 
as usual what we'll do we'll take this a uh away so we get now l e r and after that we just put the ending je lirai all right so it will apply for most of the verbs of course because it's french language it's not all the verbs we've got exceptions but we'll see the exceptions a bit later in this lesson but still that's the that's the idea of uh, constructed it if it's ending with this a uh, vowel take it away all right you get that and after that you just put the ending all right so let's see the ending for je will be a i all right and you pronounce it a remember open a okay the ending for tu will be a s you don't pronounce the s so you pronounce a all right the ending for il l will be a okay phonetically exactly the same thing as for tu okay a a the ending for nu will be o n s as usual okay remember you don't pronounce the final s you get the on sound okay nasal in your nose on on all right the ending for vous will be as usual a z but then you pronounce it a okay and then the ending for il l will be o n t you don't pronounce the final t so you get the nasal on all right so a a a on e on okay so let's see how it will go with parler parler to speak to talk okay je parlerai tu parleras il parlera elle parlera nous parlerons vous parlerez ils parleront elles parleront all right so as i said just keep your basic form and just put your endings okay a a a on e on that's it let's see now choisir to choose second group of verbs je choisirai tu choisiras il choisira elle choisira nous choisirons vous choisirez ils choisiront elles choisiront same thing remember just keep the infinitive form the basic form and just just put your endings at the end <laughs> a a a on e on okay let's see now écrire écrire is to write okay so third group but then remember as we saw with lire lire we took away this final e uh, okay and only with the first part we just add after that the endings so j'écrirai tu écriras il écrira elle écrira nous écrirons vous écrirez ils écriront elles écriront all right so it's not that difficult okay as i said you take away the e uh, and after that a a a on e on all right so of course we've got some exceptions as i said the first one is être être will become sœur so the important thing with the future simple is that the verb will change but the endings will be the same okay so the endings we saw previously will be exactly the same okay so the only thing that you've got to remember is that être will become sœur so that's the part that you will first you will have to put and then you will combine it with the ending and it will become je serai okay remember ending for je was a i je serai okay avoir is becoming or okay so tu aura aller will become ir il ira elle ira faire will become fer f e r 
So you will get nous ferons. Savoir will become sort, S-A-U-R. Vous saurez. Voir will become vers. Ils verront, elles verront. All right, so remember, être is becoming sir, avoir becomes or, aller, ir, faire, fur, savoir, sort, voir, vers. Okay, but then after all these forms, you will just put the normal endings that we saw previously. So, AI for je, AS for a, a, ONS, EZ, ONT. Other exceptions? Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir, voudre. Tu voudras. Pleuvoir, pleuvre. Il pleuvra. Devoir, d'œuvre. Nous devrons. Venir, viendre. Vous viendrez. Courir, cours. Ils, elles, courront. Ok So, pouvoir is becoming pour. And it, mean, it means can. Vouloir, voudre. To want. Pleuvoir, to rain, pleuvre. Devoir, to have to, d'oeuvre. Venir, to come, viendre. Courir, to run, cours. Ok? And then, as we saw previously, you only add after the endings. All right, so remember one more time, je ending for je is ai, tu ending for tu is as, il, elle, a, nous, ons, vous, ez, il, elle, ont, okay, so e, a, a, on, et, on. Le pronom complément en. So let's see now. Um, we can use this uh, pronom complément en, whether with a, an article partitif, so this some concept, or then it can be an article indéfini, a. In English it would be a, un, une. Or then it can be at the negative form, so that's what we'll see, and then we'll start first with l'article partitif, okay? So let's see now how we can make it. So if you have a question like, Nicolas mange du pain? So of course, first possibility that you would have to, you could have, would be to answer, oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So manger is to eat, du pain, some bread. Okay, in that case, that's really the partitive form. Okay, so you don't want to specify the quantity, but it's some. Okay, so of course, the first option that you would have would be to answer like that. Oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So you repeat everything. Normally, that's not the way we will do, because we tend to replace things with pronouns when it's possible. Okay, so the first option would be to replace Nicolas in that case. You don't want to repeat Nicolas, so you can say oui, il, he, uh, instead of Nicolas because it's masculine, mange du pain. So that's the first step. Okay, the second step, you want to replace this du pain. Okay, so this partitive thing. And that's when this pronoun en is used. All right? So, oui, il, en, mange. Okay? So, in that case, you use this il just to avoid repeating Nicolas because it was previously stated. And then, you want to use this en, the pronoun, just to avoid repeating du pain because it was in the question. Okay? 
oui, il en mange. So, remember that this en pronoun should be before the verb. Ok? So, let's see now another example. In the first example, we had the masculine form, and now I wrote same sentence, but then here we've got de la salade. Ok? Salade is feminine word, so in that case it's not du, but then it's de la, ok, but still it's the partitive form, some, ok. Nicolas mange de la salade, ok, so as we saw, first option would be oui, Nicolas mange de la salade, so you repeat the whole sentence. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas, oui, il mange de la salade, ok, and the last option, you don't want to repeat either Nicolas nor uh, de la salade, so you get oui, il en mange. Ok? Let's see now if you've got de l'eau. Nicolas boit de l'eau. Oui, Nicolas boit de l'eau. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il boit de l'eau. Third option, will, sorry, oui, il en boit. Ok? Same rule, en goes before the verb. Boire, Here, it's the, the infinitive form is boire and it's to drink. Okay, de l'eau, some water. D'accord? Okay, let's continue now. Second structure, if you want to use le pronom en instead of an article indéfini. So let's see how it goes. In that case, you know, you've got a question. Nicolas mange un biscuit. So it's quite interesting because the difference between what we had previously with the, the this partitif some, uh, when you use this partitif form, you don't really um, give any information regarding the quantity. In that case, you use un, so that's clear, it's only one. Okay? Nicolas mange un biscuit. First answer, oui. Nicolas mange un biscuit. Same thing as previously, you just put everything again. Second possibility, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il mange un biscuit. All right. Last option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas and you don't want to repeat biscuit. Okay. The, the difference here between what we saw with the partitif and now is that you've got the, here you've got the quantity. So you know exactly how many or how much. Okay, so you get to put that at the end of your sentence. Oui, il en, so you put your pronoun here before the verb, and after that you put un. Il en mange un. All right? So let's see now if it's feminine. Une banane. Nicolas mange une banane. Answer. Oui, Nicolas mange une banane. Oui, il mange une banane. Oui, il en mange une. Okay, so the information that you've got now is that you will have to put the masculine or the feminine form after. Okay, here you put une because banane is a feminine word. All right? So let's see now. Nicolas mange des céréales. So here we've got the plural form. Oui, Nicolas mange des céréales. Oui, il mange des céréales. Oui, il en mange. All right. So basically when you've got the plural form for des céréales here, you don't put anything after your verb. All right. So when you use this article indéfini, you will only need to put something after your verb, if it's un or une, or then in other cases, but we will come to that a bit later, okay? So, let's see now la forme négative. Nicolas ne mange pas de céréales, okay, so you've got the question, but here you've got the ne and then the pas, so you know that it's Négatif, Nicolas ne boit pas d'eau. So let's see the, the answers. Non, il n'en mange pas. Non, il n'en boit pas. Okay, so the concept is still the same. You put your pronoun here and here before 
your verb. And then, as usual in French, normally you should have your ne coming here, but then look, the pronoun is starting, is starting with a vowel, starting with a, okay, so you should take this a away. All right? Il n'en mange pas, il n'en boit pas. All right? And then, le pronom en, what it can replace, the preposition de plus a noun, and especially a noun for a thing. Okay, so let's see now. Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? Okay, est-ce que Frédéric est content? Content is to be happy, satisfied, okay, de son nouvel new ordinateur, computer. D'accord? Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? All right, so it's exactly the same concept. You could answer, I mean, you could make a, a long, long answer uh, reusing every, every uh, object or everything in the, the, the question, but then in that case, we'll try to go a bit faster, and so we don't want, of course, to repeat de son nouvel ordinateur here, okay? So the concept is that we will use this pronoun en instead, oui, il, en, est content. All right? So, en, same thing here, before the verb. And then after that, of course, you continue your sentence because satisfied should be in the answer. Okay? So, oui, il en est content. Negative form, non, il n'en est pas content. So, same thing, en stays before the verb. And then you get the first part of the negation ne, but then e is going away. All right? Oui, il en est content. Non, il n'en est pas content. Est-ce que Frédéric parle de son chef? Oui, il en parle. Non, il n'en parle pas. Okay? So, same thing, same concept. Just put it before the verb, okay, when you get the negative form, then you should take this e uh, away from the first part of your negative form. Il n'en parle pas. Est-ce que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Okay, avoir besoin, it's to need, okay. Notre aide, our help. Est-ce que, est que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Same thing here. We don't want to repeat de notre aide. So, oui, il en a besoin. Non, il n'en a pas besoin. Alright? And now, let's see how it goes when you construct it with one verb, avec un verbe with two verbs, with two verbs, avec deux verbes, and then if you construct it with one verb composed, like for the passé composé, for instance, so let's see now, avec un verbe, with one verb. So you've got a question, Laurent prend un biscuit. Oui, il en prend un. Non, il n'en prend pas. So remember, we saw that previously, huh? if you've got un biscuit, in that case you've got to state the amount here, un, okay, so in that case it's masculine, un biscuit, so it's un, oui, il en prend un, okay, so you put un before the first verb, non, il n'en prend pas. Laurent prend deux biscuits, oui, il en prend deux. Okay, so in that case, you get to put the amount. Il en prend deux. So it would be the same if, we, if you would have trois biscuits, three. In that case, you would put, oui, il en prend trois. But then keep in mind that if you put the negative uh, answer, non, il n'en prend pas. So you don't need to state uh, the amount. Okay, il n'en prend pas. Now, we'll see the same structures, but with two verbs. And so... The best way to construct with two verbs, if you want to make examples like that, is to construct that with the near future. 
Laurent va prendre un biscuit. He's going to take a biscuit. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Oui, il va en prendre un. So the interesting thing here is that if you look carefully, you've got first aller here. So the first verb is here. And then you've got the second verb here. So it's at the infinitive form because that's the rule in French. When you construct with two verbs, the second one will be at the infinitive. And keep in mind that your pronoun, en, here, should be before the second verb. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you that it should be between the two because you could have other things between the two. Okay, it should be before the second verb. Oui, il va en prendre un. Okay, and you've got a good example here for the reason why I told you it should be before. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. All right, because here you've got your aller verb, va. But then you've got the negative form, ne va pas. But then your pronoun should be before the second one. Okay? Il ne va pas en prendre. Let's see now. Laurent va prendre deux biscuits. Answer. Oui, il va en prendre deux. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. Okay? So let's see now when you've got a composed verb. So... We just need to put the same sentence at the passé composé form. Laurent a pris un biscuit. Oui, il en a pris un. Okay, so the important thing now is to try to remember that when you've got this form, a pris, even if you've got two parts, well, technically you don't have two verbs, you've got one verb. Okay, so your pronoun en should be before the verb, so it means before a here. Okay, one common mistake is to put this en between the two. Okay, because you tend to think that maybe you get two verbs, but no, 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 no. It's here, okay, il en a pris un. Negative form, il n'en a pas pris. All right. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Laurent a pris deux biscuits. Oui, il en a pris deux. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Le pronom complément Y. So in the previous lesson we saw another pronoun. So it's uh, the pronoun uh, en. Okay, and in that case, in this lesson we'll see le pronom Y. Well, you pronounce it E, of course. So, le pronom Y, we'll say that it can replace un lieu, a place, okay? Or then it can replace la préposition A and then a noun of thing. And then we'll see how to construct it when you've got a negative form, okay? So, let's see now for a place, un lieu. So, let's see a question. Isabelle va... En Finlande. So, va, remember, it's aller, okay? And then, en Finlande, in Finland. Isabelle va en Finlande. So, of course, you will have many options to answer to this question. The first one would be maybe the more logical. Oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. So, you just take all the elements that you had in the question and then you answer with that. Of course, in many situations, we won't, because French people like to use pronouns when it's possible. So the first option that we would have is to uh, avoid repeating Isabelle. Okay, so, elle va en Finlande. All right. And the other option we would have would be to avoid repeating this en Finlande. Okay, so it's a place. It's a country, okay? And in that case, it does mean that it would be possible to use this Y, so I, you pronounce it I, okay? So, oui, elle, I, va. So, keep in mind that it's a pronoun, and then it should be here, just before your verb, okay? Elle, I, va. All right, so, oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. Oui, elle va en Finlande. Oui, Elle y va. Okay, so let's see another 
example now. So if you're using a name of a town because previously we had a country and now it's a town, so it's Paris, okay? Isabelle va à Paris? So it's a question. Of course, you can answer like we saw previously. Oui, Isabelle va à Paris. First option, repeat everything, no problem. Second option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle. Oui, elle va à Paris. And then, last option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and then Paris. Oui, elle y va. All right? And now, it's a place. Cinéma. Okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Repeat everything. Second one, you just don't want to repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle est au cinéma. All right? Third one, just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. All right? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Oui, elle est au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. Second situation when we can use this pronoun I or Y, it's when you replace it. When you replace this preposition A and then a noun of thing. Let's see now. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense, pense is to think, à son examen, exam, okay, to think about. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense à son examen? First option, repeat everything. Oui, Isabelle pense à son examen. Second option, you just don't repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle pense à son examen. Third option, you don't repeat Isabelle. And same thing for à son examen. So, oui, elle y pense. All right? Same concept, remember, y should come before the verb. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis. So in that case, remember, it's O, but then O is clearly the combination of the preposition A and then the article le tennis, the, okay? So when you combine these two, you get this O tennis. So still, it does give you the information that it is the preposition which is modified. So still, it's possible to use this pronoun Oui, Isabelle joue au tennis. Repeat everything. Second one, oui, elle joue au tennis. And the last one, oui, elle y joue. All right? So you can see that it's, it's, it's quite short. It's quite short, but it's quite useful because you don't need to repeat all the things that were stated in the, in the question. Okay? So remember, as usual, the pronoun should come before the verb, all right? So now we'll see how to construct these sentences with the pronoun Y, but then when you're using this negative form, okay? Est-ce qu'ils a... sorry, est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis? First option, oui, elle y joue. Second, non, elle n'y joue pas, all right? So, Negative form should be before the pronoun here, okay? And then, as usual, remember the n followed by a vowel. They don't really get along, so e uh, should go away. So you take it away and you get ni, joue, and after the verb, you put your pas form, okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, elle y est, non. Elle n'y est pas. Same thing, okay? Negation here before your pronoun, but then e uh is going away, and then pas after your verb. Okay, so let's see now how you construct it with one verb. Alexandre va au concert? Oui, il y va. Non, il n'y va pas. Okay, so no changes from what we saw previously, okay, so before your verb, and then here, when you get the negative form, your ne is coming before the pronoun, and then your pa is coming after your verb, okay? When you get two verbs now. Alexandre va aller au concert? 
So it looks a bit strange. Sorry about that. Is going to go at the concert? I know, <laughs> I know, but it's just just to show you how it works, and I don't want to to, to change the the sentence. Okay. So, oui, il va y aller. Okay. So you can see here now that this pronoun i should be before the second verb. Okay. Il va y aller. Negative form, non. Il ne va pas. Okay, so your negative form is before and after the first verb. And that's the key thing. Okay, and then your pronoun is coming after, well, before, sorry, your, your second verb. Okay, so your pronoun e should be always before your second verb. Okay, and now let's see how it will work if we've got. Compo compose tense like uh, tense like um, aller here and it's at the passé composé form so Alexandre est allé au concert okay it's the past tense oui il y est allé okay so keep in mind that even if you've got two parts here okay it's only one verb huh? it's the verb aller at the passé composé, okay, so it's composed, so we've got two elements, but still it's one verb, so it means that your pronoun Y should be before, il, i, est, allé, all right, and then the tricky thing, normally it's the negative form at the passé composé, look, non, il, so you put first the negative part, so ne, Obviously, this E uh, is going away because you've got a vowel, okay, as usual. Il ni est, and then you put, as we saw previously in uh, Unit 5, or I don't remember, I guess it was Unit 5 when I introduced the passé composé, you put this PA here between être and your participe passé form, okay? So, non, il ni est pas allé. All right. Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, leçon A. And in this lesson we'll work together on the adverbs, les adverbes. And to be more precise, we'll see three cases. The first one will be with an adjective, an adverb. Second situation will be with un verbe. And then the last one will be with une phrase. Okay, so let's see that right now. The first case we'll discover or we'll work on will be with an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so let's see. The idea would is normally that the adverb should be placed, adverb placé, devant, before the adjective or the other adverb. Okay, so if you've got a structure with one adverb and one adjective, your adverb should be placed before the adjective. If you've got two adverbs, then this one should be before the second one. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Uh, first example, ce thé est trop chaud. Okay, ce thé, thé is tea, of course, and then here we've got the demonstratif. This tea is too hot. Okay, so we've got the adjective chaud here, and then this trop should be before the adjective. Okay. So it's quite easy. Uh, another possibility here, you've got two adverbs. So this one, trop, two, and then rapidement, well, fast, okay? And then parler is to talk. Il parle trop rapidement. Okay, so obviously this trop, uh, too fast, uh, should be before rapidement. Okay? And then, last example, ce film est Assez intéressant. Ce film est assez, assez enough, intéressant, interesting. Okay, so assez comes before intéressant. All right, so remember, if you've got one adverb, then you should put it before the adjective or the second adverb. All right, so let's see now how you will construct it if you have a verb. So the rule goes like that. L'adverbe est placé, is placed, so the adverb is placed en général, in general, so that's quite important in French because, of course, we've got exceptions all the time. We will have exceptions in French, but en général, okay, 
après, so after the verb. Ok? Adverbe placé en général après le verbe. So let's see how it goes now. Je lis, lire, lire is to read. Ok? So it's the present form. Je lis, I read, rapidement. Ok? So fast. Je lis rapidement. So you can see that this rapidement, fast, comes after your verb here, lire. Ok? Second example now. Elle parle, parler is to talk, doucement. Ok? Quietly. Elle parle doucement. Same thing here. Your adverb is coming after your verb. All right. And then the last one. Il conduit. Conduire is to drive. Il conduit très bien. Very well. Sa nouvelle voiture. His new car. Il conduit très bien sa nouvelle voiture. So as you can see here as well, this très bien, very well, is coming after the verb conduire, to drive. All right? So remember, the adverb is placed in general after the verb. Okay? And then be careful, of course, if you construct it at the passé composé tense. So remember, we saw that previously. You should check the unit 5 if you want to know how to construct this passé composé. But then For the passé composé, we will have, of course, some exceptions. The exceptions are assez, enough, beaucoup, a lot, bien, well, déjà, already, mal, bad, mieux, better, Trop, too, too much, too, okay. Toujours, always, and then presque, almost, okay. So, assez, beaucoup, bien, déjà, mal, mieux, trop, toujours, presque. So, Try to remember them, and then in the next page, I will show you how they change. So if you take this trop, remember it was too much. So je parle trop, I talk too much. So if we've got the, the present form as we do here, basically it does respect the rule as we saw previously, so it comes after the verb. Okay, je parle trop. But then... If you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, okay? So remember, passé composé, you've got avoir or être, and then after that you get this participe passé form, all right? So you will have to put this adverb, trop, between the two here. J'ai trop parlé. All right? Let's see now another example. Il se repose, se reposer is to, re is to rest, okay? il se repose beaucoup, a lot. And then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, il s'est beaucoup reposé. All right? Il s'est beaucoup reposé. So remember, present here, present form, you've got this adverb, it's coming after the verb, but then here, It must be here, so between the two. Okay? Another example. Je dors mal. So dormir, it's to sleep. Okay? Mal, bad. Passé composé form. J'ai mal dormi. So same thing. Doesn't come after, but it's right here. Okay? Elle sourit toujours. Sourire, to smile. Toujours, always. Present form, elle sourit toujours. And then, passé composé form, elle a toujours souri. All right. And now, let's see if you want to make a sentence. Because you will have to remember that in some cases, well, the place of the adverb can change. Est variable. Okay. So let's see 
we've got an example here. Malheureusement, so malheureusement means unfortunately, malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Perdre, it's to lose, okay? Ses clés, her keys, okay? And it's the passé composé form. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Okay, so that's one option. So you can start here, as you can see. You start with the adverb, and then you continue your sentence. All right? But then, it would be possible as well to change the order and to start like, elle a perdu ses clés, malheureusement. Okay, so you can see that it's possible to start with the adverb, or then you can end with it as well. So it's possible to move the adverb, in this case, it doesn't need to be at the right beginning of the sentence, okay? We'll see another example. Récemment, récemment means recently. Il a décidé, okay, décidé to decide, de changer, to change, de travail. Travail is work, okay? Récemment, il a décidé de changer de travail, okay? And it will be the same here. If you look carefully, you can start with il a décidé de changer de travail, so the same portion that we had here, you can start with it, and then you put récemment at the end. Okay, so in some structures, well, keep in mind that it's possible whether to start with the adverb or that to end with the adverb if you want, okay? Uh, well, it's for, <laughs> for once, it's quite easy in French, all right? Okay, so I hope it was clear. So, this was the l first lesson of unit uh, seven, unité sept. If you want more lessons, well, you can find them here, and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. In this lesson, we'll try to focus on what we call les adverbes de manière, and especially the way to construct them. Okay. So the rule goes like: if you've got, or if you want to construct uh, an adverb de manière, first you've got to know well the adjective at the masculine form, then you will make it or modify it and put it at the feminine form. And after that, you will add M-E-N-T. And when you add this M-E-N-T at the end of your feminine form of the adjective, then you will get the adverb. Okay? So, it sounds quite easy. It is not that difficult. Okay? But then we'll have a look. So, we'll take a first example, easy one. And this is parfait, okay? Parfait means perfect in English, okay? It's not that far. So, we've got here this adjective, and it's at the masculine form. If we put the same adjective at the feminine form, well, the rule normally, we, we saw that previously, goes like you put this final E, uh, you add this final E uh, at the end of your adjective to get the feminine form. Of course, we've got some exceptions, but then that's the normal rule, okay? And so based on this form, as we saw, you just add M-E-N-T, and then you get your adverb parfaitement, okay? In English it would be perfectly, okay? So parfait, then parfait, parfaitement, all right? So we'll see a few examples, and then the first one is franc, okay? So in some cases there will be a bit strange because the feminine will not follow the rule that we saw, but then, I mean, I, I told you that in advance, you know, most of them uh, follow this rule, but then, of course, we've got exceptions, okay? But then, so, franc, franche, so it's the feminine form, the adjective, and then, franchement, we've got the adverb here, okay? So, for each adjective, I will put the English translation here at the beginning, all right? Du. You don't pronounce the final X. Douce, feminine form. Doucement, adverb. Parfait. Parfaite. Parfaitement. Certain. Certaine. Certainement. Joyeux. Joyeuse. Joyeusement. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Franc, franche, franchement, doux, douce, doucement, parfait, parfaite, parfaitement, certain, certaine, certainement, joyeux, joyeuse, 
joyeusement. Ok, let's continue the list. Heureux, heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Ok, we can read them one more time. Heureux, heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Ok, and then we can see some subgroups. Ok, so it does mean that here you will have the ending of your adjective at the masculine form, then here the ending of the adjective at the feminine form, and here you've got the ending of your adverb. So it takes back this ending here, e accent grave re, and then you add this m e n t. Okay, so this subgroup follow the rule that if it ends with a e r, then the feminine form will be a e accent grave. It goes like that. R -E. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, première, premièrement. Dernier, dernière, dernièrement. Léger, légère, légèrement. Okay, one more time. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, première, premièrement, dernier, dernière, dernièrement, léger, légère, légèrement. Ok? And then, uh, second, uh, second, sorry, subgroup. Uh, so if it ends with ET, then it will go like E accent grave, TE, and then for the adverb, E accent grave, TE, and you add this MENT here. Ok? Let's see. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Okay, so I tend to insist a little bit on it just to make you hear the difference between the masculine. Secret, secrète. Okay, so you're pronouncing the T. Okay. Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so one more time. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Complet, complète, complètement, discret, discrète, discrètement. Ok, so let's see another subgroup. So actually you've got two things here. The first one, so if your adjective is ending with ENT, then it will be transformed for the adverb, like EMMENT. And if it ends with ANT, it will be transformed like a M M E N T. Okay, but then I did put them in the same group because phonetically, and that's the important thing, phonetically you will pronounce them the same way. So you will pronounce amant, and here it will be the same. You will pronounce amant. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Patient, and then patiemment. So as I told you, even if you write it E M M E N T, phonetically it goes like amant. Patiemment, all right. Récent, same rule. Récemment, récemment, récemment. Okay. Then, suffisant, suffisamment. And the last example, élégant, élégamment. All right. So let's repeat them one more time. Patient, patiemment. Récent, récemment. Suffisant, suffisamment, élégant, élégamment. Okay, and another subgroup. So if your adjective is ending with EL, then feminine form of the adjective will be E, double L, E. And then the adverb E, double L, E, M, E, N, T. Okay. Réel, réellement. Okay, so remember when you get this. Uh, here and then it's followed by 
two consonants and then they are the same consonant like here uh, the sound of the e uh changes and it's open it's a eh. so that's the reason why you've got this réel okay réellement all right then manuel manuel manuellement annuel annuel annuellement naturel naturel naturellement okay one more time réel réel réellement manuel manuel manuellement annuel annuel annuellement naturel naturel naturellement uh, the topic will be dans la ville so in the town dans la ville okay so let's start now une rue okay remember final uh, not pronounced une rue une voie ferrée final uh, here not pronounced and then this one is not pronounced either une voie ferrée une autoroute une autoroute un boulevard final day not pronounced un boulevard un lampadaire Final E uh, not pronounced. Un lampadaire. Une aire de stationnement. Une aire de stationnement. Un musée. Final E uh, not pronounced. Un musée. Un immeuble. So you can see I'm making this little liaison between the two. Un immeuble. Final E uh, not pronounced. Un immeuble. Un stade. Same thing here. Final E uh, is not pronounced. Un stade. Un gratte-ciel. Un gratte-ciel. Un restaurant. Final T not pronounced. Un restaurant. Un hôtel. So you can see that I'm making this little liaison, this little link between the two. Un hôtel. Un no, un no, un hôtel. All right. Un terre-plein. Un terre-plein. Remember this E I N nasal. So it goes in your nose and it's un plein, plein, un terre-plein. Une gare. Okay, remember when you get this G and A together, the sound is gig, ga, ga. Une gare. Final E uh, not pronounced. Une gare. Une tour. Okay, O, U, U, U. Une tour. Un palais des congrès. Final S here and here are not pronounced. Un palais des congrès. Un parc. Un parc. Un espace vert. First thing, you've got this little link between the two. Un espace vert. Final E uh, not pronounced, and then final T not pronounced. Un espace vert. Un trottoir. Un trottoir. Une borne d'incendie. Okay, final E uh, here not pronounced. Final E uh, here not pronounced. Une borne d'incendie. And then you get the nasal. Un, en, incendie. Une borne d'incendie. Un égout. Okay, little link between the two. Un égout. Final T not pronounced. Un égout. Une conduite d'eau potable. Une conduite d'eau potable. Final E uh, here and here are not pronounced. And then when you combine these two, or oh, so, sorry, these three vowels E, A, U, you get the sound O. Only O. Okay? Une conduite d'eau potable. Okay? Une conduite de gaz. Final E uh, not pronounced here. Une conduite de gaz. Un câble électrique. 
final e uh, here and here are not pronounced. Un câble électrique. Un abribus. Un abribus. Un arrêt d'autobus. So you can hear this little link between the two. Un arrêt d'autobus. Un passage pour piéton. Un passage pour piéton. Final S here, not pronounced, and then final E, not pronounced. Un passage pour piéton. Des feux de circulation. So here, final X, not pronounced. Des feux de circulation. Une chaussée. Okay, here, final E uh, not pronounced, and then you get the double S between two vowels, so it's really strong, I mean, the S is s, -s, -s. okay, so une chaussée. Un réverbère, final E uh, not pronounced, un ré, so here you've got this accent aigu, et, and then here you've got this accent grave, é. okay, et, é. so it goes like réverbère. Okay? Un réverbère. Une maison individuelle. So remember, when you get this E uh, and then double consonant, and especially here, it's the same one. Uh, that's the, the idea. It will open the sound of E, uh, so you will pronounce it like E. Okay? Individuel. Uel. Okay? Une maison individuel une maison individuelle jumelée final e here not pronounced une maison individuelle jumelée des appartements en copropriété remember final s and final t are not pronounced here des appartements little liaison here des appartements en copropriété Des maisons en rangée. Final E and final S are not pronounced. Des maisons en rangée. Une tour d'habitation. Remember, H, H doesn't exist in French. Well, in most of the cases. So, it does mean that you don't pronounce it. All right, so, d'habitation. Une tour d'habitation. Dans la Maison. So let's start now. Une entrée principale. Un vestibule. Un vestiaire. Un couloir. Un escalier. Une buanderie. Ok, so one more time. Une entrée principale. Un vestibule. Un vestiaire, un couloir, un escalier, une buanderie. Un salon, une cheminée, une salle à manger, une cuisine. Des WC, une salle de séjour, so one more time. un salon, une cheminée, une salle à manger, une cuisine, des WC, une salle de séjour, un rez-de-chaussée, un étage. Un palier, une chambre principale, une garde-robe, une chambre, one more time. un rez-de-chaussée, un étage, un palier, une chambre principale, une garde-robe. Une chambre.
Une fenêtre. Une porte-fenêtre. Une salle de bain. Une douche. Une baignoire. Une porte pliante. So one more time. Une fenêtre. Une porte-fenêtre. Une salle de bain. Une douche. Une baignoire. Une porte pliante. Une table. Une desserte. Un fauteuil. Un canapé. Un banc. Un tabouret. One more time. Une table. Une desserte. Un fauteuil. Un canapé. Un banc. Un tabouret. Une chaise. Un lit. Une armoire. Un coffre. Une commode. Un rideau. Ok. Une chaise. Un lit. Une armoire. Un coffre. Une commode. Un rideau. We'll have the pleasure to discover together two verbs. So it's quite interesting because we've got first the verb savoir and then we've got the verb connaître. And if you want to translate that, I mean, directly in English, well, basically they mean the same thing and it would be translated with to know. Okay, so two verbs for the same meaning. What does it mean? It means that you will have two different uses of these verbs. The first one, savoir, well the rule is that you will use savoir plus a verb, so after that if you want to add a verb then you will have to use savoir, or then if you want to put, as we say, structure verbal, so it's just somehow like a sentence, okay, so if you want to introduce a sentence after savoir, then uh, after to know, then that's savoir that you will have to use. Okay, but connaître, so same meaning as I said, it's to know, okay, you will use connaître only if you want to put a name or a noun after connaître, okay, so that's the main difference of use between savoir and connaître, okay, so connaître plus a noun avec un nom and then savoir with a verb or then structure or verbal structure or let's say a sentence if you want okay so first of course we should remember how to conjugate savoir at the present form here okay je sais tu sais il sait elle sait nous savons vous savez ils savent elles savent Okay, so if you look carefully here, you write it S-A-I-S, -S, well, the same way here. Here you write it S-A-I-T, okay, but then phonetically these three forms are the same, and it's C, okay? Je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait. All right, so let's see now the passé composé form. J'ai su, tu as su. Il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, vous avez su, ils ont su. Okay, so if you remember, when we introduced this uh, passé composé form, it was in unit 5, if my memory is correct, uh, then you put first, in most of the cases, the verb avoir at the present form, and then you put this participe passé form, and the participe passé form for savoir is su, okay, so it doesn't change, that's the reason why you will put it right here after each form okay so j'ai su tu as su il a su elle a su nous avons su little liaison here vous avez su same thing here 
Ils ont su, little liaison between the two, elles ont su. Ok And now, let's see, connaître at the present form. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît, nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right. Same thing as we had for uh, savoir, if you look carefully, here, connaît, A-I-S, connaît, A-I-S, and then connaît, A-I-T, so don't forget this circumflex, even if you don't pronounce it well, you should write it. Um, well, you pronounce these three forms the same way, okay? Connaît, connaît, and then connaît. All right. Let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai connu. Tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu, sorry, nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Ok, so same rule, first, avoir at the present form, then participe passé form of connaître, it's connu. Alright, so it will go everywhere for each person here. Ok, j'ai connu, tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu. Nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Ok? And now for the future form, uh, as it was introduced, introduced in the previous lesson, unit 6. Uh, so, savoir the future form, and it goes like, je saurai, tu sauras, il saura, elle saura, nous saurons, vous saurez, ils sauront, elles sauront. And then for... Connaître, at the future form. Je connaîtrai, tu connaîtras, il connaîtra, elle connaîtra, nous connaîtrons, vous connaîtrez, ils connaîtront, elles connaîtront. All right. So, let's see a few examples now. So the first one, remember, savoir, so you construct it with a verb or a sentence, ok, in that case I just put a verb, je sais chanter, ok, so remember, savoir to know, chanter to sing, je sais chanter, alright, so second verb here, chanter, well the rule in French is that if you've got a structure like that with two verbs, the second verb should be all the time at the infinitive, ok, je sais chanter, like that. All right. If you put the same sentence at the passé composé, as we, we saw previously, the, the passé composé form of savoir, it goes like, j'ai su chanter. All right. And then the future form, je saurais chanter. Okay. So it's quite easy. Hein? Je sais chanter, j'ai su chanter, je saurais chanter. That's it. Let's see, connaître now. Je connais cette personne. Okay, so connaître... To know, okay? <laughs> and then, cette personne, personne is person, and it's uh, feminine, so if you want to put this, this, you should put it at the feminine, so it's this person, cette personne. Je connais cette personne. Passé composé, j'ai connu cette personne. And then the future form, je connaîtrai cette personne. All right? So it's not that difficult, okay? But, of course, There is one exception. And the exception is savoir plus a noun. Okay, so you will use this structure only if you want to introduce this concept that we call in French par cœur, so by heart. Let's see one example. Je sais ma leçon. So in that case, savoir to know, ma leçon, my lesson. Okay, so in that sentence, when you use je sais ma leçon, you really want to say that you know your lesson by heart. Okay, that's the reason why we use savoir in that case. Okay, same thing for the second example. Je sais mon texte, my text, or then my lines if you want. Je sais mon texte, okay, so it's the same. You want to introduce this idea that you know your text or your lines by heart. 
Okay, and that's the only exception when we will use savoir plus a noun. All right, le conditionnel présent. So basically, the conditionnel is, as in English, this conditional form. So would, could. Okay, but of course, as in English, we've got different tenses for that. And the first one that we will see, so the more classic tense that we we'll us usually use, sorry, when we talk about the conditionnel, it's the present form. Okay, so let's start now. Le conditionnel présent. So in this lesson, we'll see first la formation, so the way to build it, to make it, and then, of course, l'emploi, so when you should use this conditional present form, okay? So let's first start, if that's okay with you, with the formation, the way to make it. So you'll see that it's quite easy in a way. And normally that's the reason why we introduce it right after the future tense. So if you didn't see the video regarding the future tense, I definitely advise you to do it because uh, it will be more clear for you. So it's unit six. I don't remember the lesson, but check unit six, unit six, sorry, and then the future and you'll find it. Okay. Because the way we construct this conditionnel présent is the same way that we construct the future. Okay. The only difference will be the endings. All right. So let's take the first example that we've got here, parler, belongs to the first group of verbs. Remember, we've got three in French. And the first group of verb is ending with a air, like here. Okay, so these verbs are regular. So that's a good news, and normally that's the reason why we start with them. Uh, so you don't have to change your verb. So parler is like that. You will keep it like that and based on this form after that you will add the endings okay and for je the ending will be a e s okay so you don't need to modify your infinitive form the basic form is like that it goes there and right after you just add the ending a e s and you get je parlerai all right so it's quite simple. Second group, so verbs ending with ER. Be careful, not all the verbs ending with ER, but a quite decent amount of them <laughs> belongs to the second group. But then still, it will be quite easy because it is exactly the same way. You don't modify your infinitive form. You just keep it like that, all right? And after that, you add your ending. Je finirai. So, A, I, S. Je finirai. All right, so it's quite easy. You keep your basic form, your infinitive form, and right after, you just put the ending. Okay? For the third group of verbs, so, of course, we will have some exceptions. So, we'll see that a bit later in this lesson. But still, the main rule is if it's ending like lire, lire to read, okay, uh, with this e, uh, well, the idea is that you will take this e uh, away, as we quite usually do in French, okay, and after that, you will add your ending. Je lirai. All right, so the rule goes like, if you've got final e, uh, then you take it away, You've got your form here, L-I-R, and then you add your ending, A-I-S, je lirai. Okay, so you've got three forms here, and they're actually the, well, conditional présent forms. Je parlerai, je finirai, je lirai. Okay, parler is to talk or to speak, finir, to finish or to end, lire, to read. Okay, so the endings now. So we saw that... Previously, that, well, the ending for je will be, whoops, sorry, the ending for je will be a, i, s, okay? The ending for tu will be, well, the same, a, i, s. The ending for il, l, will be a, i, t, okay? The good news is that even if we write them differently, like you see here, we pronounce them the same way. 
and it goes like e e e all right so as usual in french what you pronounce well it's not that difficult in a way but then remember how to write them a i s for je a i s for tu a i t for il elle so now let's see nous and nous goes like e o n s okay and it should be pronounced ion remember final s is not pronounced ion okay then for vous it goes like e -E z and it goes like ye okay remember when you get this e before it goes like ye 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 okay ye so that's the reason why we had this ion here and then ye all right and the last one so even if it looks <laughs> scary because you've got three vowels here and then nt okay r e e n t so as usual that's the way you should write it but then phonetically the good news is that you pronounce it a e. so the the same way that we had here a e, a e here a e, and then a e. okay so let's pronounce them a a a Yon, ye, e. So if you look carefully, you've got only three phonetical pronunciation. The first one is here and here. It's the same. So it's e. After that, we've got this yon, and after that, after that, we've got this ye. All right. So let's see now for parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay. So je parlerai. Tu parlerais, il parlerait, elle parlerait, nous parlerions, vous parleriez, il parlerait, elle parlerait. Second example, choisir from the second group of verbs, choisir is to choose. Je choisirais, tu choisirais, il choisirait, elle choisirait, nous choisirions. Vous choisiriez, il choisirait, elle choisirait. Okay, not that difficult. And the last example, so for the third group, it's écrire. Écrire is to write. Okay, so same rule, if you remember, the example was with lire, to read, but then it's exactly the same rule. So if you look carefully, it's ending with the, this E. Uh, okay, so you take it away, and after that you put the ending. J'écrirai. Tu écrirais, il écrirait, elle écrirait, nous écririons, vous écririez, ils écriraient, elles écriraient. All right, so it's not that difficult anyway. But of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said in the beginning. So the, the, the idea for these exceptions is that the, the, the word, or sorry, the verb will change. So endings will be the same so that's one good news so all the endings that we saw previously well they will be the same but then you get to remember the way the verb will change so if you saw that's the reason why I, I spoke about the future uh, lesson if you saw the future lesson and you remember the way these verbs are changing for the future the good news is that they will be changing the same way so être will become sœur. All right? And then after that, you will have to put the endings. Je serai. All right? So you will keep this sœur all the time for your conjugation. And after that, you will add all the endings that we saw. Okay? Avoir will become or. Same thing here. After that, you will add all the endings. So, tu aurais. Aller will become ir. And you'll get il irait, elle irait. Faire will become fer. Nous ferions. Savoir will become sort. Vous seriez. Voir will become ver. Il verrait, elle verrait. Okay, so let's see them one more time. So être, to be, je serai. 
avoir, to have, tu aurais. Aller, to go, il irait, elle irait. Faire, to do, nous ferions. Savoir, to know, vous sauriez. Voir, to see, il verrait, elle verrait. All right, so one more list of exceptions. Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir will become voudre. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir will become pleuvre. Il pleuvrait. Devoir will become d'œuvre. Nous devrions. Venir will become viendre. Vous viendriez. Courir will become court. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right, so let's see them one more time. Pouvoir can, je pourrais. Vouloir, to want, tu voudrais. Pleuvoir, to rain, il pleuvrait. Devoir, to have to, nous devrions. Venir, to come, vous viendriez. Courir, to run, il courrait, elle courrait. All right. So, it was the first thing regarding the conditionnel présent. And then, as I said, regarding the, the, the fact that it's quite close to the future. So, the important thing is to remember that the endings for the future are AI, AS, A, ONS. A Z O N T. Okay, but then for the conditional present, if you remember them, it was A I S, A I S, A I T, I O N S, I E Z, A I E N T. So to be totally honest, if you think about that, because basically we construct these two tenses the same way. Okay, so the endings here. And here will be the only way to make the difference between the future and the conditional. So it's quite important to really remember them uh, by heart. Okay, so remember, future, A, I, A, S, A, O, N, S, E, Z, O, N, T, but then conditionnel présent, A, I, S, A, I, S, A, I, T, I, O, N, S, I, E, Z, A, I, E, N, T. Okay? And now let's see when we should use this conditionnel present because that's the most important thing. The first situation would be to express a desire or a wish. Exprimer un désir ou un souhait. Okay? J'aimerais être en vacances. Aimer, to like or to love. Okay? And here you get the conditional form, être, to be, en vacances, on vacation, holidays. J'aimerais être en vacances. The second use will be if you want to donner un conseil, to give an advice. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Okay, devoir to... Have to, but then in that case, when you say vous devriez, you should. Uh, th that would be the more correct translation. Vous devriez apprendre, apprendre is to learn, le français, French. And then if you want to ask something politely, that's the tense you should definitely use. And especially if you go in a coffee restaurant or if you go in a shop and you, you want to ask some for something, then use this conditional form. I mean, trust me, it's quite important. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? So, let's read them one more time. J'aimerais être en vacances. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Another use of this conditional Present is, is if you want to construct a sentence, like in English, for instance, with this if. Okay? So, if in French is 
C. And then the rule is quite strict in French. If you start with this if C, then it should be followed by the imparfait form. We didn't see this form yet. It will come in the next lesson or in the next unit, sorry. So no stress about that. It's just an example, but it's just, just for you to know that if you want to construct this if structure, then it should be followed by imparfait. Then comes le conditionnel. Okay, so let's take one example. Si j'avais le temps, je ferais du sport. Okay, so si j'avais le temps, so if I had, it's the same in English, you, 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 put, uh, you put this, I had. Si j'avais le temps, so time, je ferais, remember it was faire, to do, but then at the conditional form, du sport. Okay, another example. Si j'étais riche, so riche, rich, était, it's to be, remember, je voyagerais, voyager is to travel, autour du monde, around the world. Oops. <laughs> And then the last one. Si elle était là, so être, to be, là, here, nous irions, so remember it was to go, aller, and it becomes ir, irions, nous promener. Ok, so se promener, to have a walk. Question avec qui et que. So it's quite important, so please take the time to listen to me. <laughs> so let's start now. Les questions avec qui et que. So we'll first start with qui, and then after that we'll see que. All right. So the first thing, qui And it's starting right now. Qui est-ce qui parle? So it's a question, okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? Second example would be, qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay, so the first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So in both cases, uh, well, these questions are mostly for uh, oral use because uh, when we add this S qui est-ce que, normally it's when you talk, okay, if you write, you don't really need to put them, uh, we've got some more formal way to write questions, we saw that previously, okay, but still it's possible orally to use these structures, so the question is, why do we use qui here and qui here, and then qui here and que here, okay, because it can, it can look a bit messy at the beginning, especially if you don't really know how to use or to structure that, so the first thing, that we've got to remember, yes, it's here. So the first part here, this key, well, we will use this key here just because we want to have the information and it concerns a person, who, okay? Key means who when we start it, when we start the question with it, okay? Qui est qui parle? Qui est ce que tu regardes? And then we've got the second part here, as we saw, and it's quite interesting because we've got two options here, the first one and the second one. So the first one, you will use qui just because you will ask the question regarding the subject of the verb. You get the verb here, parler, okay? And the information that you want to have concerns the subject of this verb. And then here we will use que just because we want to have the information concerning the object of the verb. So you've got regarder here, but then if you look carefully, you already have the subject. It's tu regardes, okay? So, qui est-ce qui parle? So if you want to translate it directly, you could translate it like, who is talking? Okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? All right, so here, you want to have the information regarding the person, And then here you want to have the information regarding the subject of the verb parler. Okay? And here, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So who are you watching? So first thing here, because you want to have this information, the information regarding a person, qui est-ce 
que, and here it will be the object of the verb. So you are watching someone. Okay? So let's see a few examples. The first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then the answer could be, ma femme parle, my wife talks or is talking. Okay? So in that case, you can see that in the answer, the answer that you give here, it's ma femme parle. Okay? So it's the subject, ma femme parle. And then the second example we had, it's qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay? Je regarde mon ami. Okay, mon ami, my friend, regardez was to, to watch or to look. Okay, je regarde mon ami. And you can see here that it's, well, basically it's quite clear. It's quite clear. So, qui, just because you want the information for a person. And then the second qui, just because it will be the subject. Ma femme parle. Okay, here, qui, because it's the person. Mon ami, my friend, it's a person. And then, que, just because, if you look carefully, it comes after your verb, because it's not the subject, it's the object, okay? Grammatical object, we're not talking about an object, but a grammatical object, so it can be a person, it could be a dog, animal, or an object if you want, okay? So, je regarde mon ami, all right? Now, let's see que. First question, qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Okay? Second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? All right? So, remember that even if you don't have the que here, but you get this qu, all right? It does mean that previously we had the e here and here, but then as usual, if you look carefully, we've got here another e starting here. So, we've got to take our e away, okay? So let's see now. First part, we use this que because we want to have to have the information regarding a thing. Okay, so we had qui previously, and it was for a person, and then que it's for a thing. So it's not for a person. So que will be for a thing when you start your, the the question with it. Okay, and then here. So remember, we've got this qui. Here and then we've got this que here. Well, it will be exactly the same idea that we had previously. So you will use qui here just because you want the information regarding the subject of the verb. You've got the verb here to do. Okay. And then here you put this que just because you want to have the answer with the object of the verb. Okay. You've got the verb here. Faire, to do, same verb. But then you've got the subject. Tu fais, you do. Okay? So the first question, Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? What is doing this noise? Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Or this sound, if you want. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Okay? So let's see now the same Question. Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? And the answer would be, la voiture de mon père fait ce bruit. Okay? My father's car. Okay? La voiture de mon père. So if you translate it directly, it's the car of my father. And then you've got the verb. Okay? But then this long thing is the subject. La voiture de mon père fait Ce bruit. Okay, so that's the reason why first we had this que, because in, it's a thing, it's not a person, okay? And then qui here, because it's the subject of the verb faire. Okay, second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? So if you remember carefully, it was what are you doing? Qu'est-ce que tu fais? And the answer, je prépare un chocolat chaud. Okay, so I wanted to put another verb in the, the, the answer just to, 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 well, show you that is you don't really need to answer with the same, same verb, you know. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Je prépare, so I prepare, je prépare, and then this is 
the object of the verb. So the object, just let me repeat, uh, the grammatical object of the verb. So je prépare un chocolat chaud. All right. So now remember that we can, of course, construct these things with preposition. Okay. Just because in French we've got uh, verbs and uh, verbs are in some cases uh, constructed with preposition. So you will need to remember these things. So preposition can be a, avec, de, pour, and then chez. Okay. À qui est-ce que tu parles? Okay, remember, so parler, to talk, is constructed with a, to talk to, okay, parler à quelqu'un. So if you want to know à qui est-ce que tu parles, who are you talking to, okay, à qui est-ce que tu parles. So it doesn't change, you just need to first start with the preposition and then you continue your structure, okay. Uh, jouer, jouer, it's to play, okay. And then normally, if you're talking about a sports or activity, so sport or activity, then we tend to use this preposition a with it. Okay, so play, but then a, and then the name of the activity. It could be football, or it could be basketball, or it could be whatever. Okay, à quoi est-ce que tu joues? And then now, I assume that you will tell me, oh, oh have a look at that. What on earth is going on why do we have this qua and not que okay well because that's the rule and we'll see that but that's the rule in french if you want to construct a question like here with que but then it is constructed with a preposition then que will change and then it will become quoi okay that's the reason why Qui doesn't change, que will be transformed into quoi. So that's the reason why here we've got à quoi est-ce que tu joues. Okay. Now, avec qui est-ce que tu viens. So venir is coming avec with. Okay. Avec qui est-ce que tu viens. Avec quoi est-ce que tu écris. Écrire is to write. Okay. Same thing. With. Okay, and then it's exactly the same rule, remember, I told you that, que becomes quoi here, that's it, avec quoi est-ce que tu écris, okay, so remember, preposition with qui, no problem at all, but then preposition plus que, non, <laughs> you will have to use quoi. Okay, so remember that's quite important because it, it, it can sound a bit strange if, uh, if you're using this que instead of quoi with the preposition. Les nombres ordinaux. Les nombres ordinaux. Premier, première. Okay, so you've got here the English version, so first, okay. But then as usually in French we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, so I will write... Here first, masculine, then feminine, and I will read both, okay? So, premier, première, deuxième, second, seconde. Okay, so it's quite interesting because here you've got deuxième, and then it doesn't change. It's uh, the masculine or the feminine form is exactly the same, so that's a good news. And then we've got here... Another option, second or seconde, okay? In that case, it does mean that nothing is coming after, okay? So, deuxième usually means that you've got after that third, fourth, etc., okay? But then, second normally, it's the end, okay? It's the second one, okay? Troisième, okay? Masculine form, feminine form, the same. Quatrième. Cinquième, sixième. Okay, one more time. Premier, première, deuxième, second, seconde, troisième, quatrième, cinquième, sixième. 
septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième, onzième, douzième. So, so far, I assume that it's not that difficult. You've got to remember that it's M, ok? Septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième, onzième, douzième. Treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, seizième, dix-septième, dix-huitième. Ok? Treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, seizième, dix-septième, dix-huitième. Dix-neuvième, vingtième, vingt-et-unième, centième, millième, millionième. Ok? Dix-neuvième, vingtième, vingt-et-unième, centième, millième, millionième. In this lesson, we'll only focus on the verb être. Ok? So it will be a short one, but still quite important. Je serai. Tu serais. Il serait. Elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. All right, so remember, conditionnel présent, so if you want to translate directly this je serai, it's I would be, okay? But in French, we've got only one form like that. Remember, so A-I-S, but then you don't pronounce the final S, je serai. Same rule here, no pronunciation of the final S, tu serais. Phonetically, it is the same. And then the good news here, it will be exactly the same. So final T is not pronounced, so phonetically, you've got the same form as we had previously. Il serait, elle serait. Okay, so one more time. Je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait. Alright, so then, final S not pronounced, and then this is this. Yon, yon, remember, it goes in your nose, it's uh, nasal, yon, nous serions. Okay, then, vous seriez. And last, but not least, and remember, it's quite strange, but A, I, E, N, T, many letters, only one simple sound, E, as we had here, here, and here, it's exact, exactly the same sound, il serait, elle serait. All right? Je serai, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. In this lesson, we'll focus on the conditional present form of avoir, to have, okay? So, let's see now how it goes. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Alright, so if you remember carefully, this conditional present form, so it was introduced in this unit, so check, uh, check the unit 7 and then put uh, conditional present, you will find the whole description and the, the, the whole lesson of uh, conditional present, but still, here, you can see that j'aurais, well, if you want to translate it directly, it would be I would have, okay, but then in French we've got only one form here, and then Take a good look at the endings, A-I-S, A-I-S, A-I-T, I-O-N-S, I-E-Z, I-U-N-T, okay? The endings for the conditional present form, okay? So let's see how you pronounce them now. J'aurais, so final S, not pronounced, j'aurais, then same thing here, tu aurais, you don't pronounce the final S, il aurait, same thing here, final T is not pronounced, elle aurait, ok? So you've got the same pronunciation here for the three first forms. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait. Ok? Then, nous aurions. So, this little link between the two, this liaison, nous aurions, final S, not pronounced. Vous auriez, little link between the two, vous auriez, and then, ils auraient, 
little link, but then look R E E N T like that, and you only pronounce A, like we had here. It will be exactly the same pronunciation here. Ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so let's see that one more time. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 7, Leçon K. And in this lesson we'll discover together uh, the verb aller, so aller means to go, and especially the conditionnel present form of this verb. Okay, so let's start right now. The first form goes like j'irai, tu irais. Il irait, elle irait. Nous irions, vous iriez, ils iraient, elles iraient. Okay, so let's check them one more time. The first one, j'irai. Okay, remember, final S not pronounced. J'irai. Tu irais. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu irais. And then, Il, masculine form, irait, final T, not pronounced. So what you can see is that these, these form, this form and this form are actually pronounced the same way. Okay? So, il irait, elle irait. Okay, then, nous irions. Okay, so let's make this little liaison between the two. Nous irions, final S, not pronounced. Nous irions. Then, Vous iriez. So, same thing here. Make the liaison. Vous iriez. Remember, when you get this EZ at the end, you get the sound E. Okay? Iriez. Iriez. And then, vous iriez. Alright? And the final form. Ils iraient. Okay? So, remember, make the liaison as well. You get this S and then the vowel after. So, ils iraient. And then, if you look carefully, you get A, I, E, N, T. Okay? But then, phonetically, it goes like a. Okay, so technically these form and these forms here are pronounced the same way and it goes like irait. Okay, so ils iraient and then the feminine elles iraient. Alright, so j'irai, tu irais, il irait, elle irait, nous irions, vous iriez, ils iraient, elles iraient. Okay, so that's it for the conditionnel present form of the verb aller. Aller, remember, it was to go. And then uh, you've got the YouTube channel here. And it's uh, youtube.com slash imagier if you want more videos. And then the website is here and it's waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye, bye. And it's uh, lequel and laquelle. Okay, so first thing, well, let's see what lequel is. Lequel, well, basically, it's when you want to replace this quel. So, the meaning of quel is what, okay, then plus a noun. D'accord? So, quel plus un nom, okay? And when you want to replace this group, so what plus a noun, then you can have the lequel instead. Okay, remember that in that case, we'll see that a bit later in this lesson, but lequel, it will be for the singular masculine. Okay, then let's see how it goes for the feminine form, singular as well. So it will be laquelle, okay, and then it will replace this quel, so what, but in that case, as you remember probably, we've got the feminine and the masculine form plus a noun, so plus un nom, okay? So if you want to replace quel plus un nom, then you will have to use laquelle. So this is the feminine form and this is the singular feminine form, okay? So let's see now the singular form and the plural form. So the first form that we'll see will be the masculine. So it will be, as we saw, lequel, okay? So remember, you get to pronounce it lequel. Even if you get this QU, okay, remember that this U phonetically doesn't exist, so lequel. Then for the plural form, you will have 
add this s here and then s at the end okay and it will give you the pronunciation lequel all right so final s is not pronounced so here when you've got this l uh, s okay it's just like the article if you remember le le okay so it goes like lequel all right and then the feminine form so singular we saw it laquelle okay so basically same rule q u u is not pronounced here and then you get this e double l e well phonetically here it is the same as what we have here so laquelle so the only difference between the feminine and the masculine form is this first part okay laquelle lequel all right phonetically i mean now of course if you write them uh, you get to put this double l uh, here and then let's see for the plural form so it will be quite logical in a way because we will have this plural form so le okay as we had here le okay and then quel you just add this final s at the end okay and the good news is that phonetically it's lequel here for the masculine form and then lequel for the feminine form all right so phonetically it's exactly the same when we talk about the plural form here but then if you want to write it correctly remember that for the masculine it will be a l s at the end here and then a l l a s at the end for the feminine all right so let's see a few examples so the first one il y a deux cafés Okay, so if you want to translate directly, it would be, there are two coffees. Lequel veux-tu? So, of course, you could ask the same question, and you could put this, quel café veux-tu? What? <laughs> let's put it, let's translate it straight, it would be more, more clear. Quel café veux-tu? would be translated like, what coffee do you want? Okay, in that case, Okay, when you use this lequel, well, technically, you could translate it directly like which one, okay? Which one do you want? Okay, so il y a deux cafés, lequel, so in that case, just to avoid repeating quel café, okay? Veux-tu, so remember, vouloir is to want, tu, you, okay? Do you want? So, lequel veux-tu? Il y a deux cafés, lequel veux-tu? All right. Or well, then it's possible as well. In that case, it's more, let's say, spoken. Okay. The first one is uh, the official one because in that case you put lequel, and after that you change the order. Remember, first the verb, then the subject, because that's the official and the formal way to ask a question. But then, if you speak normally, it's possible to well put the order a bit differently. So il y a deux cafés. So this doesn't change of course okay tu veux lequel all right so you just keep the normal order so you've got the subject here you've got the verb here and then you put lequel at the end okay tu veux lequel all right meaning is the same but then it's better to use the second form orally and the first form if you get to write then use this first form okay so let's see another Example, so deux bus arrivent. Okay, so two buses arrive. Lequel prenez-vous? Remember, prendre is to take. Hein? Vous, you. Okay, so it, you could be the, the, the plural form, but then it could be the polite form for you. Okay, so lequel prenez-vous? Which one do you take? All right. Or then, it could be as well as we saw in the previous example. You just keep... The normal order, so subject, verb, vous prenez lequel. All right. And then another example. Voici les pâtisseries. Laquelle choisissez-vous? Okay, choisir, to choose. Voici les pâtisseries. Laquelle choisissez-vous? All right. Same thing here. Voici les pâtisseries. Vous choisissez laquelle? All right. So you can see that in that case, it's the same. We just keep the normal order. So subject, verb, and then laquelle. All right. So now you've got 
lequel, lequel, and laquelle. Remember, phonetically, well, basically, this second part, quel, doesn't change if you want to pronounce it, okay? So, les professions. So, many, many words. I hope you're ready because it will be quite useful and maybe a bit long. <laughs> Let's try to see that together. Okay, so we'll start right now. Un menuisier. Un électricien. Un plombier. Un maçon. Un agent immobilier. Un opticien. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Un menuisier. Remember this ui. Ui, ui. Menuisier. All right. Then, un électricien. So you can see that we make the liaison here. Un électricien. i e n i -E n Électricien. All right. Then, un plombier. Remember, O-M goes like O-N. So it's on, on. Plombier. All right. Un maçon. Here you can see that we've got this little cédille beneath the C. Okay. And it just means that you will pronounce this C as S. Okay. So that's the reason why. It's un maçon. Son. Okay. O-N in your nose, nasal. Un maçon. All right. Then liaison here. Un agent immobilier. Same thing here, un opticien. Ok, next page. Un dentiste. Un docteur. Un jardinier. Un agent d'entretien. Un mécanicien. Un boucher. Alright, so let's see them one more time. Un dentiste. Remember, nasal, dent, dentiste. Un docteur, e u r e r e r un docteur. Un jardinier, remember, i e r i e i e jardinier. Un agent d'entretien, liaison here, un agent d'entretien. Un mécanicien, remember, i e n i e n like here. Yen, yen. Un boucher. C -h, 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 H. Un boucher. Boucher. So I tend to insist a little bit, but then it goes like un boucher. OK? Next page. Un coiffeur. Un bijoutier. Un pharmacien. Un infirmier. Un vétérinaire. Un fermier. Okay, so let's see them now. Un coiffeur. Remember, O-E goes like wa 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 Quoi. And then E-U-R, er. Un coiffeur. Then we've got un bijoutier. Un pharmacien. So remember, P, H. So these combination of these two letters will produce the F sound. Fa, fa. Pharmacien. Okay, un pharmacien. Okay, then liaison here, un infirmier. Un infirmier. I E R at the end, ye, ye. Infirmier. Okay, then un vétérinaire. Remember, accent aigu, accent aigu will give you this E sound. V, T, R, and then here it's open. R. Un vétérinaire. And then. Un fermier. Ok, let's see the next page. Un pêcheur. Un marin. Un policier. Un militaire. Un gardien. Un pompier. Alright, so let's see them. Un Pêcheur. So remember when you get this accent circonflex, you know that's the name of this accent. On the top of E, it will open the sound. So you get E, E, really open. Okay, so pêcheur, pêcheur, and then E, U, R, E, R. Okay, un pêcheur. All right, then un marin. 
I-N nasal, un, ok Un marin, all right Then, un policier, I-E-R, i -E, un policier, all right Then, un militaire, remember, A-I, it's this E sound as well, E, militaire, all right Then, un gardien, I-E-N here, yen, un gardien, all right Then, un pompier. So remember I was a, <laughs> what I told you, when you get this O-M here, it will give you the sound on. So exactly the same sound as this O-N, all right? So in your nose, pom, pom, pompier, all right? Next page now. Un avocat, un comptable, un architecte, un scientifique, un instituteur, un bibliothécaire. All right, so let's see them. Un avocat, so remember, liaison here and then final T not pronounced, okay? Un avocat, un comptable. So, OM, remember, it goes like on, all right? And then, strangely, this P is not pronounced. Un comptable, all right? Then, un architecte. Same thing here, liaison, okay, un, a, un architecte, all right, and then ch, 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 architecte, all right, then un scientifique, un instituteur, okay, so liaison here, and then remember this e, u, it goes like er, er, with the air, instituteur. Then, un bibliothécaire. Bibliothé. Remember, in French, the H doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Bibliothécaire. Un bibliothécaire. All right, so let's see the others. Un réceptionniste. Un facteur. Un conducteur. Un camionneur. Un chauffeur de taxi. Un pilote. Ok, so let's see them. Un réceptionniste. Ok, remember when you get this T-I-O-N, so normally it will give you this S, I mean, I'm talking about the T here, ok? So, sioniste, ok? Réceptionniste. All right. Then, un facteur. E-U-R, heure. Un facteur. Then, un conducteur, O-N, on, conducteur, un camionneur, camionneur, un chauffeur de taxi, ok, A-U-O, then e u r e chauffeur, un chauffeur de taxi, un pilote, ok, this one is quite easy, un chef, un musicien, un danseur, un comédien, un chanteur, un serveur. Ok, so let's see them. Un chef, so remember, CH, it will give you the sh, sh sound. Un chef, ok. Then, un musicien, un musicien. Un danseur, remember, nasal here, a n en, un danseur. Un comédien, i e n y -e n comédien. E, accent aigu here, gives you the e sound, comédien, all right? Then, un chanteur, un serveur, un barman. Well, this one is not that difficult. Un sculpteur. Un sportif. Un peintre. Un photographe. Un journaliste. All right, so, un barman. Un sculpteur. Same thing here. This P here is not pronounced. So, Sculpteur, un sculpteur, un sportif, un peintre. So remember when you get this E-I-N together here, then you pronounce this 
un sound. So nasal in your nose, un peintre. All right. And remember, final e uh, here is not pronounced. It only gives you the pro possibility to pronounce these two letters. So tr, tr. Okay. Un peintre. All right. Un photographe. So here, p h and here, p h. Pronounce it like f f f f. Photographe. Okay. Same thing here. This e, uh, you don't insist on it. You only pronounce this f at the end. Un photographe. Okay. Un journaliste. Same thing here. You know, final e uh, only gives you the t. Journaliste. Okay. Un barman, again. Oh no, un sculpteur. So I've been putting two times the same page. Well, let's repeat it. Un sportif, un peintre, un photographe, un journaliste. Okay, so let's see the last page. Un rédacteur, un dessinateur, un couturier. Okay, so un rédacteur, all right, remember, e accent aigu here, so you will have this E sound, rédac, and then this er, okay. Un dessinateur, and then un couturier. Remember, O-U goes like OU, okay, couturier, I-E-R-I-E, okay, un, courtu un couturier. This lesson, I, I thought it might be useful for you to have some vocabulary regarding cuisiner, so cuisiner is to cook, just because French people like to talk about food, they like to talk about uh, cooking and all these things, so it's usually quite useful to have few words or few verbs to, to be able to discuss about that, okay? And especially at this level, unité 7, I think it might be the time. So let's start now. Éplucher. Battre. Faire mijoter, pocher, griller. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Éplucher. Okay, remember when we've got this CH, the sound is SH. Okay, éplucher. All right. First group of verbs, okay, ending with ER. So basically it is quite easy to conjugate. Okay, then battre, battre. Okay, even if you've got deux here two letters well basically you've got only the sound of one okay battre okay third group of verbs a bit tricky to conjugate but still it's possible at your level then faire mijoter okay faire mijoter then pocher okay first group Grillé, okay? It's interesting because here you've got this E and then double L, okay? In most of the cases, and I don't say always because it's not possible in French to say always, we've got so many exceptions, but in most of the cases you will pronounce it Y, Y, okay? Grillé, that's the reason why. Grillé, okay? Remember, uh, R because these are verbs here. Grillé, pocher, éplucher, okay? You pronounce them a, okay, even if you've got this air, okay, this combination of two letters, a air at the end will give you the sound a, all right, so grillé, okay, let's see the others. Rotir, cuire au four, bouillir, frir, couper, all right, so rotir. Don't forget this accent circumflex, sorry. Then, cuire au four, bouillir. So that's maybe the, the tricky one of the list here. So, bou and then yir. Okay, bouillir. So, bou, yir, bouillir. Okay, frire and then couper. Well, coupé is quite easy. First group here, so je coupe, tu coupes, il coupe. Nous coupons, vous coupez, il coupe. So quite easy to conjugate. Coupé en tranche. Râpé. Étalé au rouleau. 
remuer, mélanger. OK, so let's see them. So here you get this coupé again, OK, en tranche. So tranche is a slice, OK, so in that case, coupé en tranche. Rappé, so don't forget this accent circonflex here. First group of verb, easy to conjugate. Étalé au rouleau. OK, étalé, so first group of verbs are quite easy to make. Then remué, so this maybe it's the difficult one of the list. Remu, mu, 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 OK, remué, remué. And then mélanger, OK, remember, G, E, goes like J, J, OK, mélanger, mélanger, all right. Les plats d'un repas. So, it will be a short lesson, but still, in the previous lesson, we saw that um, all the verbs, uh, well, the main verbs that we can use in French to uh, discuss about uh, cooking and how to prepare uh, a dish. And now, we'll see les plats d'un repas. Okay? So, un apéritif, une entrée, Un plat principal, un fromage, okay, so let's see that, un apéritif, so here you get the liaison between the two, un apéritif, okay, and then you get the A accent aigu, so it goes like et, un apéritif, then une entrée, une entrée, okay, remember, well, technically this final E here is not pronounced, so phonetically it doesn't exist, so it's et, ok? Entrée. Remember, nasal here, en, entrée. Une entrée. Then, un plat principal, final T here, not pronounced. Un plat principal. I-N, remember, it's nasal, it goes in your nose. Un, un, principal. Un plat principal. Alright? Then, un fromage. Ok, remember, G, E, J, J. Ok, in that case, you don't insist on the final E, J. Fromage. Un fromage. All right. Then, une salade. Un dessert. Un café. All right, so, une salade. Same thing here. Final E, you don't insist on it. It only gives you the pronunciation of the previous letter, so D. Salade. Salade, ok? Une salade, un dessert, ok? So, remember that we've got here two S, ok? That's the reason why you pronounce it S, and then it opens the E. Dessert, un dessert. So, you don't say un dessert, ok? But you say un dessert. Final T, not pronounced. Un dessert, alright? Un café. OK, remember, accent aigu here, un café, un café. OK? Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 7, leçon P. And in this lesson, we'll discover together le conditionnel passé. So, maybe some of you might think that it's a bit early to introduce this conditionnel passé form because normally... It comes a bit later, but still, I think that we've been introduced this conditionnel présent form in this unit, so it's still warm, and I still have the feeling, and I have the feeling that normally it should be okay for avoir and être, so at the conditionnel présent. That's the reason why I think it might be useful to introduce this conditionnel passé form, especially because it's not that difficult if you master the conditionnel présent form and then the passé composé, I mean by that, these participe passé forms, okay? So we'll see how it goes. And then the first thing that we'll see in this lesson is l'utilisation, okay? So when do we use this conditionnel passé form? And the second thing that we'll work on is la formation, so the way we make it or we build it, okay? So let's start with the first one, so utilisation, okay? And then the first use that we will have for this conditionnel passé it's to express regrets, exprimer les regrets, exprimer des regrets, okay? So that's the first, well, 
one of the first use, let's say. The second one would be une information non confirmé. So if you're looking at the news, for instance, and then they want to talk about something that happened, but then they don't have all the uh, elements to con confirm this information. So normally in that case, they just use this conditionnel passé form, okay? And then something, I mean, the last one would be imaginer des situations irréelles dans le passé. So you want to imagine some situations that, well, technically are not real and they take place in the past. So that's the use of le conditionnel passé. Okay, so first one, exprimer des regrets here. Second use, information non confirmée. And then the last one, imaginer des situations irréelles dans le passé. Okay? And now, let's see how we make this conditionnel passé. Alright? So, first example I wanted to put is Je mangerai au restaurant. Okay? So, this sentence, if you remember, we saw that in, uh, well, these units anyway, when we introduced this conditionnel présent form. Okay? So, you get the verb. The verb is manger. Je mangerai au restaurant. And then, if you look at the conditionnel passé, well, it will go like, j'aurais mangé au restaurant. Okay? Second example, tu regarderais la télévision. Tu aurais regardé la télévision. Okay? So, same thing here. The first one is at the conditionnel présent form. Second one, conditionnel passé form. And then, il irait au travail would become il serait allé au travail. All right. So if you look carefully, then what you can see? I mean, you can see first that it is composed. So you've got two parts. The first one here is avoir. Then you've got what we called and what we saw previously for the passé composé form. This is participe passé. Okay, past participle. Here, the same way. Have a look. It's avoir and then it's the past participle, regarder. And here, we've got être and here we've got the past participle. So, maybe if you want to construct this conditionnel passé form, you will have first to use avoir, like we saw, but then avoir should be at the conditionnel présent form. Okay, then you will put after this participe passé form that we saw previously when we introduced the passé composé because that's the second part that we use for the passé composé as well. All right, so first, avoir at the conditionnel présent form plus participe passé, past participle, then you will get your conditionnel passé form. Okay? But we saw as well that in some cases we'll use être but then same thing, it should be at the conditionnel présent form whoops <laughs> plus participe passé so it doesn't change and it will give you conditionnel passé. Okay? So you get to remember that in most of the cases in most of the cases you will use avoir. Okay, so if you're not sure, if you've got a doubt, then put avoir, okay? If you know that it should be constructed with être, then put être, of course, okay? In both cases, remember, that should be, they should be at the conditionnel présent form, all right? So we'll see. So the verbs that will require être will be the following. Aller, to go. Arriver, to arrive. Descendre, to go down. Devenir, to become. Entrer, to enter, to come in, to go in. Monter, to go up. Mourir, to die. Naître, born. Partir, to leave. Rester, to stay. Retourner, to return. Sortir, to go out. Tomber, to fall. Venir, to come. Okay, so all these verbs 
will require être for this conditional passé form. And then if you remember what we've been seeing for the passé composé, uh, well, there are exactly the same verbs that will requ require être, whether for the passé composé or then for the conditional passé. And the good news is that we've got other composed tenses in French and this list will be always the same. So it means that this list of verbs that will require être will be the same for all these composed tenses. Okay? So remember, one more time, aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, mourir, naître, partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Okay, so remember, you will have to use être with these verbs. Okay, so as I said, être, but then for the conditionnel passé, être should be conjugated at the conditionnel présent. All right, so let's see that. But then the other uh, group of verbs that will require all the time être will be what we call les verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs, okay, and they usually goes like se regarder, okay, se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter, so they will use être for this conditionnel passé form, but then, well, it, I mean, they are the, exactly the same verbs, you know, as we saw for this part, uh, passé composé, so it is always the same rule. Okay, so se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter. So all the reflexive verbs will require être at the conditionnel passé. Okay, so let's see now how avoir and être, how they go at the conditionnel présent because that's the first part that you will have to put. So it's j'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait. Elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so that's what you will use in most of the cases. Okay, so let's see that. Let, let's see it one more time. J'aurais, remember, final S not pronounced. Tu aurais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced. Nous aurions. Liaison here, this little link. Nous aurions, final S not pronounced. Vous auriez, liaison here, and then a Z will go like E. Vous auriez, okay, and the last one. Ils auraient, so liaison here, elles auraient. And then look, if you've got A, E, E, N, T, then phonetically it goes like aurait. Okay, so phonetically you've got aurait here, aurait, aurait, and here as well, aurait. Okay, so it's quite easy to produce orally. And then être, je serai, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Okay, so we'll see that one more time. Je serai, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu serais, final S not pronounced. Il serait, final T not pronounced. Elle serait, nous serions, final S not pronounced, vous seriez, so here when, you give a, whoa, when you've got this a Z at the end, then you get the sound E, seriez, so vous seriez, okay, and the last one, il serait, R-E-E-N-T here, phonetically it goes like E, okay, serait, elle serait, so same thing here, we've got serait here, phonetically I mean, Serait, serait, and serait. So, the same sound. Okay? And then, for the second part that we use, so what we call le participe passé. So, the thing is that for the first group of verbs, so normally the first group of verbs, we talk about the verbs ending at the infinitive form with a air. Okay? So, these verbs are quite easy because if you've got, well, have a look at the, the, the first example that I put, and it's 
parler, parler, to speak, to talk. So you can see that it ends with a uh, air here. It's here, okay? So this is the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb, okay? And then the participe passé, so this past participle, will be like that, a uh, accent aigu. So parler, all right? Then the verb regarder, a uh, air here, will follow the same rule. Regarder, like that, with the accent. Accent aigu. And here, when we talk about the first group of verbs, we are really talking about a lot of verbs. Okay, so many, many verbs will follow this simple rule. Okay, so the second part that you will use for this conditionnel passé will be written like that if the verb is belonging to the first group of verbs. Even the verb Aller. Aller to go, remember, it's a tricky verb normally when you conjugate it, especially at the present form. But for this past participle form, it is quite easy because it goes like A, L, L, E, accent aigu. So it does follow the same rule. This E, R become E, like that. Okay? Second group of verbs, so regular verbs, not all the E, R verbs. Okay? Quite easy as well. Let's take choisir. Choisir is to choose. Okay? ER like that and it will become E. Finir, to finish or to end. ER and it will become E. Unir, to unite. ER and it will become E. So it's quite easy. Okay? Choisir, choisi. Finir, fini. Unir, uni. So of course... We've got exceptions because we're talking about the third group of verbs. And then this one is, well, it's tricky. I mean, we've got to be honest with that. The first advice I would give you is to try to remember them by heart, okay? And I've been making um, a video about these uh, tricky uh, participe passé, okay? But then here we can have a look at them. So subgroups here. Talking about the one ending with U, okay? So, for example, connaître, to know, will become connu, okay? Voir, to see, will become vu, okay? Ending with I, partir, will become parti. Partir is to leave. Rire, to laugh, will become ri, okay? The one ending with IT, like here. Écrire, to write, écrit. Dire, to say, Dear, uh, sorry, D, <laughs> getting tired. And then ES, mettre will become me. Mettre means to put. Prendre, to take, will become pris. Okay, so here you've got the past participle, so the, the, the participe passé of these verbs here. Okay, so we'll take one example. The example will be parler, parler is to talk or to speak, okay? So, we will have at the conditionnel passé form, if you remember, so first part here is avoir, at the conditionnel présent, then here we've got the participe passé of parler, and it will give you j'aurais parlé, tu aurais parlé, il aurait parlé, elle aurait parlé, nous aurions parlé, vous auriez parlé, ils auraient parlé, elles auraient parlé. Okay, so I wanted to put this E like that in another color just to tell you that if you've got a normal structure like that, so you've got the subject and then you've got the verb, Okay, nothing in between, so subject, verb. Then if you use avoir, exactly the same rule as we saw for the passé composé. So if you use avoir here, you won't have to modify your participe passé. So it will change, it won't, it won't change, sorry. It will stay like a accent aigu, okay? Even if it's the singular, the plural, or then the feminine. Okay, it doesn't change, so it will stay like parler.
All right? But if you use être, like here, il serait allé, okay? So remember, allé was belonging to this group of verbs that require être, okay, to construct this conditionnel passé. All right, il serait allé. So in that case, you can see that at the end, it's allé like that without anything after. But then, if we look at the feminine form, elle serait allée, you will have to add this e uh, at the end, okay? Remember, e, uh, in most of the cases, when you have to add something, it's the mark of the feminine, okay? So, elle serait allée, okay? But then, phonetically, it doesn't exist, all right? So, it's allée here, and then allée here, the way you pronounce it. But if you want to write correctly, you should put it. And then the same thing for the plural. We will have to put the plural and then the mark of the plural, the thing that we've got to add at the end, will be S. The good news as well, you don't pronounce it as <laughs> usual in French. You write it, you don't pronounce it. Okay, so it doesn't change. It's aller here, aller and then aller. Okay, phonetically, the same thing, but remember, it's just a question of, well, being correct if you want to write it. Okay, and then, logically, feminine, plural, then you should add a mark of the feminine, as we had previously, and s mark of the plural. And guess what? You don't pronounce it. Okay, so phonetically, it's aller, aller. Aller and aller. All right, but you need to write them. Okay, so let's see now the full thing. So, je serai allé. Okay, and then if you want to make the liaison, it would be more beautiful. Je serai allé. Tu serais allé. Il serait allé. Elle serait allée. Nous serions allés. Vous seriez allé? Il serait allé, elle serait allé. All right, so that's it. And then one example with these reflexive verbs that we saw, and then, well, I just wanted to use this se présenter. Okay, so je me serais présenté, tu te serais présenté, il se serait présenté, elle se serait présentée. Nous nous serions présentés, vous vous seriez présentés, il se serait présenté, elle se serait présentée. All right, so if it's not really clear yet for these uh, reflexive verbs, I mean, the way you should conjugate them, I definitely advise you to check the, the, the lesson uh, regarding these uh, reflexive verbs because uh, I've been making one video regarding that so it would be it would be easier for you to understand the way we construct it especially in that case why we put this je me tu te etc okay all right so remember the last thing that you should remember before ending this lesson is that when you construct this conditionnel passé so in most of the cases you will have to use avoir at the conditionnel present form then the participe passé and it will give you conditionnel passé, okay? In some exceptions, so we saw the list of verbs, you should really try to remember them by heart. I know it's not easy, but, you know, try your best. And then the, the reflexive verbs, okay? So for these exceptions, we will use être at the conditionnel present form, then the participe passé, and it will give you this conditionnel passé form, okay? I hope it was clear. Uh, youtube.com slash imagier that's the place where you can find all the videos and then the website is here imagier.net have a great day bye bye beauté et hygiène so let's start now la beauté une brosse un démaquillant un peigne, un poudrier. Okay, so let's see them one more time. La beauté. Remember, we've got this combination of e, a, u here, 
of the, the vowels, okay? But then it will give you the sound O, beauté, okay? La beauté, all right? Then, une brosse. Remember, don't insist on this final uh, brosse. Un démaquillant. So we've got this Q, U, but then U is not pronounced. So you get the sound qui. Okay, and then remember, double L after E will give you the sound y, 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 D, ma, qui, yan. Final T not pronounced. Démaquillant. Okay, and this is nasal, in your nose. En démaquillant. Then, un peigne. Final E, you don't insist on it. It's ñ, ñ, the last sound. And then this E, E combination will give you this E. Open a, un peigne, all right, un poudrier, okay, remember, o, u, ou, pou, poudrier, all right, un bigoudi, un fer à friser, un gant de toilette, un gel, un sèche-cheveux, Okay, so let's see them. Un bigoudi. It's quite funny to pronounce, isn't it? Bigoudi. Okay, but not difficult. Un fer à friser. Un gant de toilette. Remember, G A goes like ga. Okay, g g g. But in that case, you've got this a n, so it's nasal gant. And then final t is not pronounced here. Un gant, gant de toilette. Un gel, un sèche, so this one is a bit tricky, so remember, we've got this E accent grave here, so it's really open, E, sèche, okay, sèche, and then cheveux, usually this one is a bit of a problem because some of the students normally pronounce it chevaux, okay, so try to keep in mind that you get E, U here, so it goes like E, Okay, and then final X not pronounced, fi sorry, final X, <laughs> should pronounce it the French way. Final X is not pronounced, so you get CH, and then you get V, okay, cheveux, okay, and the full thing, un sèche cheveux, all right. Une laque, une hygiène. Un crayon à lèvres, un rouge à lèvres, un maquillage. All right, so let's see them. Une laque. Remember the rule when you get this Q, U, well, U is not pronounced, so you get K, K, like that. Une laque. Une hygiène. So remember, we've got this Y here, vowel, and it's pronounced like I. E, 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 okay? Hygiene. H doesn't exist. H doesn't exist in French. So, hygiene. Un crayon à lèvres. Final S, not pronounced. Lèvres. Okay? And then when you get this Y between two vowels, <laughs> then you will have this cré. So, like if you would have I here. A, I, cré. And then another E here, yon, crayon, un crayon à lèvres, un rouge à lèvres, same thing here, final S not pronounced, and then this E accent grave here, it gives you the E, really open sound, lèvres, all right, un maquillage, okay, so here, same, same rule, Q, U, but then U is not pronounced, so qui, and then Y, Y. Maquillage. Une crème hydratante. Un coupe-ongle. Un vernis à ongles. Un parfum. Un shampoing. Ok, so let's cover them together. Une crème hydratante. So remember. H is not existing, and then this Y is pronounced like I. Hydratante. Okay, don't insist on the final E, and this is nasal. Hydratante. Un coupe-ongle. Okay, O-N, remember, nasal, 
on ongle, un coupe ongle, un vernis à ongle, final s here not pronounced, same thing here, vernis à ongle, un parfum. So remember, even if you've got this um like that, phonetically it's exactly the same thing as if you would have un. So it's nasal and it's un. So it really goes in your nose. You don't pronounce the M at all. Un. Okay? So, par fin. Parfum. Okay? Un parfum. And then, un shampoing. Okay? This is a strange one, really. Try to listen to me and repeat. So maybe you shouldn't visualize the, the, the word, but still, it goes like shampoing. Okay, champ point. One more time, champ point. Okay, the, the full thing, champ point. Okay. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, Leçon R. And I've been thinking that I could make maybe two videos, so it would be the first one regarding the verbs, okay? Uh, so just to give you quite many verbs, because at this level at this stage normally you should definitely try to learn as much or as many verbs as possible and then vocabulary is the same okay so we will start right now avoir possédé okay so for each verb okay i will first put the direct translation of the verb and then maybe you know, one or two other verbs, okay? So it's uh, really important to just keep in mind that the first one is the direct translation, okay? So the first one that you should use in almost all the contexts, okay? But in some cases, it's possible to use the other options depending on the context or the situation, okay? But then, so, avoir, posséder. Être, aller, S'en aller. Obtenir, recevoir, avoir. Pouvoir. Ok, one more time. Avoir, posséder, être, aller, s'en aller, obtenir, recevoir, avoir. Pouvoir. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître, prendre, saisir. So let's repeat them one more time. Voir, Regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître. So for these two verbs, I've been making one video, okay, that you can find if you use the search engine in uh, YouTube, okay, because, well, really they mean exactly the same thing, okay, but it's just a construction that you will have to uh, modify if you use savoir and then connaître, okay? Prendre, saisir. Penser, réfléchir. Mettre, placer. Vouloir, avoir envie de, désirer. Dire, raconter, dire, déclarer. Ok? Penser, réfléchir, mettre, placer, vouloir, avoir envie de, désirer, dire, raconter, dire, Déclarer, donner, 
offrir. Aimez bien, aimez, appréciez, regardez, travaillez, écrire, donner, offrir. Aimez bien, aimez, appréciez, regardez, travaillez. Écrire, trouver, retrouver, jouer, falloir, devoir, utiliser, courir, se précipiter, trouver, retrouver, jouer. Falloir, devoir, utiliser, courir, se précipiter, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver. Aider, assister, épauler, placer, poster, mettre, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver. Aider, assister, épauler, placer, poster, mettre. So that's it for the first part of the verbs. Okay, so the next lesson will be exactly the same thing. Um, I mean, the same thing, no, but the same concepts, but other verbs. Okay, so. The video can be found here, okay, and then the all the others as well, and the website is here, okay. Have a great day, bye bye. Les verbes, okay, so it will be the second part of the uh, the list of the verbs that I wanted to 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 give you before the end of this unité set, okay. And so let's start. Essayer, tenter. Okay, so just to repeat, if you didn't check that, uh, well, if you didn't see the, the first video, so I will put each time the first verb here, uh, it would be the direct translation of this verb, okay, so it will apply, uh, well, it will be the same meaning in almost all the contexts, okay, and then the second or third or maybe fourth option, uh, it will be a translation that would be possible in some situations, okay, but not all. Okay, but still, essayez, tentez. Demandez, interroger. Lire. Appeler. Partir. Essayez, tentez, demandez, interroger, lire, appeler. Partir. Entendre, ouïr. Démarrer, commencer, entamer. Espérer, souhaiter. Tourner, retourner. Avoir besoin de, nécessité. Entendre, ouïr, démarrer, commencer, entamer, espérer, souhaiter, tourner, retourner, avoir besoin de, nécessiter. Se sentir, croire que. Ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, 
payer, régler, acheter, se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter, porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner, envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, retrouver, se réunir, porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner, envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, retrouver, se réunir, croire, souhaiter, désirer, couper, tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber, croire, souhaiter, désirer, couper, tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber, manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer, manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer. Au oh, café, so quite useful. Un serveur, une table, une terrasse de café, un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, so one more time. Un serveur, une table, une terrasse de café, un crème. Remember, euh, accent grave, est eh, eh, un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, remember, we've got this X here. Ex expresso. Ok. Un cappuccino, un chocolat chaud, un café glacé, un thé, un thé vert, un thé blanc. All right, hello. Un cappuccino, not really difficult to produce. Un chocolat chaud, remember, ch 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 chocolat, and then final day not pronounced. Chaud, final day not pronounced. Un café glacé, un thé, remember, h is not pronounced. Un thé vert, final thé not pronounced. Un thé vert, un thé blanc, final c not pronounced. Un thé blanc. Ok? Un thé nature, une tisane, une camomille, un thé au lait, un thé au citron, un thé glacé. Un thé nature, une tisane, une camomille, so remember when we get this E and then double L, it goes like Y, Y, mille, mille, camomille, une camomille, un thé au lait, final thé not pronounced, un thé au citron, un thé glacé, un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. All right. Un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme. In most of the cases, French people 
we'll pronounce it like un jus de pomme. D, d, jus de pomme. All right? And then same thing here, un jus de tomate. Okay, so you don't insist on the d, jus de, jus de tomate. <laughs> I know it's quite difficult to produce, but still try. So, un jus d'orange, here it's not difficult. Un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. Okay? Au restaurant. Okay, so let's start now. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Une assiette à dessert, une serviette, une fourchette, un couteau, une cuillère. Let's repeat them. Une assiette à dessert, une serviette, une fourchette, un couteau, une cuillère. Une cuillère à soupe. Un garçon, un menu, une carte des vins à la carte, une cuillère à soupe, un garçon. Remember when we get this cédille beneath the C, it will give you the pronunciation s of C. So instead of k, as it should be with O. Okay? So un garçon. Un menu, une carte des vins, à la carte. Une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. Une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. Le poisson, so it will be a vocabulary lesson. Ok, so let's start now. Le thon, la dorade, la morue, le saumon, le bar. Let's repeat them. Le thon, remember, H here is not pronounced. Le thon, la dorade, la morue, final E not pronounced, le saumon. O N, remember, nasal in your nose, saumon. Le bar. Le merlan. La raie. La sardine. L'aigle fin. La liman de sol. Ok? So, le merlan. La raie, final E, not pronounced. La sardine. You don't insist on the final E, uh, it only gives you the N, N pronunciation. Sardine. L'aigle fin, la limande sol. La sol. L'espadon. La truite. Le macro. La lotte. La sol. Same thing, don't insist on the final E, uh, okay? It only gives you the L sound. Sol. L'espadon. O-N in your nose, nasal. On. Espadon. La truite. Same thing here, final E uh, not pronounced. T. La truite. Le macro. So technically this K, just pronounce it K. Mac. Macro. Macro. All right? And then... E, A, U, remember when you combine these three vowels, you get the sound O, macro. Okay? And then la lotte, final E, uh, not pronounced, lotte, t, t, lotte. Okay? La lotte. All right? Les céréales. L'avoine. Le blé. Le maïs. Le millet. So let's repeat them. L'avoine, remember, not insist on the final E. 
l'avoine, le blé, here, accent aigu, et le maïs. So here you've got this tréma, so maïs, maïs, and then you pronounce the final S, maïs. Le millet, here, I, and then double L, so I, I, millet, a T at the end, open, millet. L'orge, le quinoa, le son. Let's repeat. L'orge, le quinoa, le son. L'imparfait, so we saw previously le passé composé, so this past tense uh, that we use quite often, and this is the second one, so l'imparfait. And in this video, we'll see together the first part, l'utilisation, so when do we use l'imparfait, okay, and then the second part will be la formation, so how do we build, how do, do we construct this uh, imparfait form, okay, so, but then let's focus now on l'utilisation, so when do we use l'imparfait, and then the first situation when we will use l'imparfait will be if you want to describe something in the past, une description dans le passé. Okay, so if you want to describe something in the past, like in this example here, la pièce, the room, était, so that's the verb here, the verb is to be, okay, and it's the, uh, the imparfait form, était, grande, big, et sombre, dark. Okay, so in that case, you want to describe the room, then you should use l'imparfait. Second situation, une habitude dans le passé. So, a, a habit, something that you, you are used to do in the past, okay, and the example is Je partais, partir is to leave, okay, and it's the imparfait form here Le matin, the morning, à 8 heures Okay, so in that case you want to say that it's an habit, something that you do in the past Then you should use l'imparfait, okay Other situation, when you will need to use l'imparfait Une répétition dans le passé Okay, so répétition, you understand, something that repeats itself dans le passé. The example here, nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant. Okay, so aller is to go tous les soirs, okay, so every evening au restaurant. All right, so something that you do and that repeats itself, itself in the past. And then, if you want to say something that lasts, durées to last, in the past, dans le passé, then, in that case, this uh, sentence is quite interesting because I've been, I wanted to, to make the difference between the use of the, the, the imparfait here, okay, and then here, here you've got the passé composé form, all right? So, je regardais la télé, sur la télévision, all right, so in that case, you tend to use of course, l'imparfait, because it lasts <laughs> a while uh, when you watch TV, so if it's a movie or something like that. Quand, when, tu as appelé, okay? So, uh, appelé is to call, call on the phone, for instance, okay? So, in that case, you want to make the difference between something that happens and it's uh, an action, so tu as appelé, okay? And then here, you use l'imparfait, well, because it lasts longer. Okay, so je regardais la télé quand tu as appelé. All right? And then we've got another structure. So if you want to insist on the fact that something uh, is, well lasts and then something uh, continues, then we've got this structure. Être, so it's to be, être en train de, okay? And then you will put l'infinitive form after that, so the basic form. All right? So an example here as well. So I wanted to make the difference as well with you know, between the, the, the um, passé composé form here, je n'ai pas répondu, répondre is to answer, okay, car, because, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, okay, so faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, okay, and then in that case you use this structure, j'étais en train de, because you want to say that, well, it lasts, okay, it's quite long. It's not something that will take one minute or two minutes, but it's longer than that, okay? So that's uh, the reason why we use this j'étais en train de faire, so était en train de, as we saw here, okay? So you will have to use this verb 
être, ok, but then at the imperfect form, of course. Ok, so, and then one thing that you should keep in mind is that être, so to be, croire, to believe, penser, to think, savoir, to know, are often, and it's quite important, souvent, often, so it's not always, ok, because uh, you, it's not possible to say always, especially if you're talking about French grammar, ok, but uh, often you use them at uh, l'imparfait form, ok. Now let's see how to construct uh, this imparfait, ok, so I've been taking some verbs some from the first group and then the second and the third group, okay? If you remember, we've got three groups of verbs in, uh, in French. So the first one, uh, regarder, so is to watch, okay? And then I've been putting this new form at the present. For a good reason, you will see why a bit later. So you should know the present form of regarder and it goes like nous Regardons, so that's the present form. Nous regardons, okay. For the second group, I've been taking finir, finir to finish, to end, okay. Same thing. You will put this new form at the present. Nous finissons, okay. And then for the third group of verbs, I took prendre. Prendre is to take, okay. And it goes like nous prenons. Alright, so nous regardons, nous finissons, nous prenons. So the reason why I wanted you to see the new form is just because that's the form we will use to construct the imparfait. Okay, so the thing will be to take away the ending of nous. And the ending of nous, it's O-N-S like you saw here, here, and here. So the idea is that this ending, you will take it away, okay? Then, that's the thing we will keep. Regard, like that, without the ending for new. Finis, without the ending for new. And then pren, without the ending, okay? And, after that, you will add the endings for l'imparfait. And they will be like for je, a, i, s, for tu, a, i, s, for il or elle, a, i, t, for nous, i, o, n, s, for vous, i, e, z, and for il, elle, at the plural, a, i, e, n, t. All right, so now if you, uh, or if we talk about the pronunciation, um, the good thing is that this will be pronounced E, this will be pronounced E, obviously, because you write it the same way, this will be pronounced E as well. So final S and final T are not pronounced, and this is pronounced the same way. And the good news is that this form, A, I, E, N, T, is pronounced E as well. Okay, so we've got E here, E, E, and then E. Okay, so that's quite easy to produce. I mean, it's not normal, it's not uh, a big difficulty for the, the students to, 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 to make this E sound. Okay, and then for NU, it will be, so if you remember correctly, so final S is not pronounced here. Okay, and then this O-N, so it's a nasal and it goes in your nose and it goes like on, all right? So you don't hear any N, so it's really on, okay? When you add this E before, okay, you will get the Y, Y sound. So you get Yon, Yon, that's the full form, okay? Yon, and then Y here, okay? So E, E, E. Ion, ye, e. All right. So now, je, regarde, and then e. So that's the full form that you, you will have, and then you will pronounce it je, regardais. All right. So if we have the example for 
finir, it was finis, remember, this form that we got from the new form of the present. Okay, so finis, and then you add et. Je finissais. All right, and then the last verb we had was prendre, if I remember correctly, yes, and it was Prun, okay, the form that we got when we took away this ONS ending from the present, okay, so prun, and then you add your ending, eh, je prenais. Okay, so let's see how it goes for uh, all the forms. So, je regardais, so it's uh, regarder to watch, tu regardais, il regardait, elle regardait. Nous regardions, vous regardiez, il regardait, elle regardait. Okay, so remember, regardait, 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 and then as well, regardait. And after that, you've got this yon, as I said, regardions, and then yé, regardiez. All right, let's see, finir now. Je finissais, tu finissais, il finissait. Elle finissait, nous finissions, vous finissiez, il finissait, elle finissait. Okay, so same thing here. Have a look. Finissait, 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 same form. And then finissait here, same form. I mean phonetically, okay? And then yon, finissions, and then finissiez. All right? And the last verb we had was to take, prendre. Je prenais, tu prenais. Il prenait, elle prenait, nous prenions, vous preniez, il prenait, elle prenait. Okay, so remember that in that case you will have to really pronounce the e uh, like a uh, prenait. All right, so same thing here, final s not pronounced. Je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, final t not pronounced, so the same form. Okay, and then plural as I said, prenait as well. Okay, and here, prenions. Prenier. Okay? And then, of course, of course, avoir and être can be in some cases quite tricky. So that's the reason why um, we'll take a few minutes to watch or to have a look at them. The first one, avoir, and well, it's not that tricky at all because it goes like that. J'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. So it is quite easy, honestly, it is quite easy. Just try to remember, especially if you want to use it only orally, then it's quite easy because it's avait, 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 and avait, remember, okay? So j'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, il avait, final T not pronounced, nous avions, let's make this beautiful liaison here, nous avions, okay? Vous aviez, same thing here, a little liaison, ils avaient, Elles avaient, okay? And then let's have a look at être. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Okay, same thing, not that difficult at all, and especially if you want to pronounce it, it's not really difficult. J'étais, okay? Remember, here we've got a uh, accent aigu, so it goes like E, all right? J'étais. Okay, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, little liaison here to make it more beautiful, nous étions, okay, final S not pronounced, remember, vous étiez, same thing here, little liaison, and then ils étaient, liaison as well, elles étaient. Bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, this is Unité 8, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll work together on le passé composé et l'imparfait. So, I just introduced this imparfait form in the previous lesson. And we saw le passé composé, well, a long time ago in a way. No, still, um, the thing is that normally with students, uh, when they've got uh, these two forms, so after having introduced this imparfait form, it's usually quite tricky and difficult to know exactly when to use le passé composé and l'imparfait. Okay, so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to just spend a few minutes with this, 
video and just try to 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 work a little bit on that and see if uh, things and um, uses are uh, okay with you okay so let's start now so in this video first I will focus on l'imparfait so when should we use l'imparfait and then after that le passé composé okay so the first thing that will refresh will be l'imparfait okay so l'imparfait remember that you will use it when you want to describe something in the past okay so ex the example i took la pièce était grande et sombre okay la pièce the room grand big sombre dark okay so in that case you use être to be all right uh, and then you use it at the imparfait form to make this description Okay, the second use will be something that you have, so une habitude, it's an habit or something that you are used to do, okay, so une habitude dans le passé, so the example, je partais le matin à 8 heures, okay, so in that case you want to insist on the fact that it's something that you tend to do every morning, maybe je partais le matin à 8 heures. Okay, so not so far from this habit uh, concept is uh, something that will repeat or that did repeat itself in the past. Okay, une répétition dans le passé. So if you want to express or to, uh, well, say something that repeats itself in the past, then in that case you should use l'imparfait. The example, nous allions, okay, so aller, to go, tous les soirs, okay, so every evening, au restaurant okay so in that case you should definitely use the imparfait form okay nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant all right another use would be une situation qui dure dans le passé durée is to last okay so in that case i did write this sentence with the two forms so here you've got the imparfait form and here you've got the passé composé form Okay, and then we tend to use both here just to make well clearly the difference of use of them. So the first one, je regardais, regardais to watch la télé. Okay, so je regardais la télé quand, when tu as appelé, appelé is to call. Okay, on the phone quand tu as appelé. All right. So we want here with this sentence here to use the imparfait form because. It lasts in the past, okay, so when you watch TV, maybe it, it won't last one minute or two, but a bit longer than that, okay. And then, tu as appelé, well, it's an action, something that doesn't take too long, if you compare it to the previous verb here, je regardais la télé, okay. So that's the reason why here, je regardais la télé, uh, will be used at the, 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 the imparfait form, because it lasts longer than the, the other one, okay, tu as appelé. All right, and then another structure that we can use as well if we want to insist on the fact that something lasts and something continue, okay? Pour insister sur la durée et continuité, then the structure is être en train de, and then you put your verb at the infinitive form here, so infinitive form is the basic form of the verb, okay? So être, so that's the verb être that you should conjugate at the imparfait form, okay? And then, same thing here, I wanted to make the difference between the two, so here you've got this passé composé, je n'ai pas répondu, so répondre to answer, okay, maybe someone was calling on the phone, je n'ai pas répondu, okay? Car, because, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, okay? So, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. So, in that case, you use this structure, so, être en train de, because you want to insist on the fact that, well, it takes a while to make them, okay? J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Now, le passé composé. So, le passé composé, well, the first use, of course, of le passé composé, it's une action, an action, qui s'est passé, that took place, avant le moment présent. So, before the present moment, the, the example that we could have here, je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Okay? And here, well, the first part here, je suis en retard, I am late, it's the present. Okay? And then you want to 
will give the reason why. Parce que, because, j'ai marché, so marché is to walk, okay, and this is the imparfait form, okay, trop lentement, too slowly, okay, je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Then, une action dans le passé qui a des limites temporelles, okay, so it's an action that took place in the past, all right, but then you've got some clear limits when it started or when it ended, okay, and then the example here, dimanche dernier, j'ai dormi toute la journée, dormir is to sleep, okay, so this is here, the passé composé form, toute la journée, all day long, okay, so you've got clearly limit, toute la journée, you know exactly when it stopped, all right, une action qui est terminée, okay, so clearly here, if you want to introduce your birth date, then je suis né, okay, so it was an action in a way, okay, but still it's finished, so le 16 juin 1970, okay, je suis né, so that's the reason why here, you will use this verb naître, okay, je suis né le 16 juin 1970. Une histoire composée de plusieurs actions. Okay, so if you've got several actions, okay, in a story, then normally you should use le passé composé. For instance, hier, yesterday, je suis rentré, I came back home, okay, rentré, je suis rentré, j'ai préparé à manger, etc., etc. Okay, so orally you will ex well explain to a friend or to a colleague what you've been doing uh, yesterday, okay, you want to introduce these actions, okay, and in that case, that's the tense that you will use, the passé composé, all right? If you want to speak about an event of the past with, for instance, hier, yesterday, le mois dernier, last month, ce matin, this morning, cet après-midi, this afternoon, dimanche midi, so dimanche is um, Sunday, okay, midi, noon, jeudi, Thursday, matin, morning, okay, so with these structures, and if you're talking about an event, an action, okay, in that case, you definitely should use le passé composé. Okay, so of course these are examples. Okay, we've got so many, many others that I didn't have the. Well, I didn't want to put everything in this page. All right. So if you want to use, and this is quite important, a negative form. Okay, connected to uh, the present form or the present. Uh, for instance, if you want to say that, uh, so, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage, uh, patinage is uh, skate, ice skating, okay, you want to say that you never did ice skating, in that case, well, you should use the passé composé form, okay, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage, oops, I should put something instead, it's not a virgule, it's point, it should be point, sorry, it was a little mistake here, okay, but still, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage, okay, same example here, uh, il n'a jamais eu de chance, okay, avoir de la chance, to have luck, okay, il n'a jamais, jamais, never, eu de chance, so in that case, you should put that at the passé composé form. Okay, and then, well, same thing, nous n'avons pas eu de chance, all right, in that case it's with pas and not never, but it's clearly the same meaning, nous n'avons pas eu de chance, and in that case you should definitely use here the passé composé form, okay? So, of course, avoir and être can be quite tricky, so that's the reason why we'll take a few minutes to see them, and we'll start with avoir, okay? This is the imparfait form. J'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. And next to it, we'll put the passé composé form. J'ai eu. Tu as eu, il a lu, il a eu, sorry, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Ok, so let's take one minute to see them one more time. J'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, same thing, il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait, 
Nous avions, little liaison, final S not pronounced, nous avions, vous aviez, same thing here, little liaison between the two, ils avaient, so remember, even if we've got this A, I, E, N, T, well, we don't pronounce it, or we don't pronounce this E, N, T, so we get avait, okay, phonetically, ils avaient, okay, and then elles avaient. And now for the passé composé form, so if you remember clearly, we use the verb avoir at the present form, then we put this participe passé form, so it does mean that it will be the same all the time, that's the reason why we see it here, okay, and this is pronounced, so it's an exception because normally you should pronounce it differently, but, so it's an ex exception, it, it is pronounced U, okay, U, that's the way you should pronounce it, so j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. All right? So, j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu. Okay, so here you can see that we make double liaison. Nous avons eu. Okay, same thing here. Vous avez eu. Ils ont, and then here as well, tu. Ils ont eu, elles ont eu. All right? Let's see être now. And it goes like, j'étais, so same thing here, we'll start with uh, the imparfait form. Tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. And then the passé composé form, j'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été, nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. Okay, so let's take one minute again to pronounce them. J'étais, so final S not pronounced. Tu étais, same form. Il était, elle était, final T not pronounced. Here, little liaison and final S not pronounced. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, liaison as well here. And then remember, this is not pronounced. Elles étaient. Okay, then... So same same rule as uh, we saw for uh, avoir. So you get avoir here at the present form, and then you get this participe passé form. So that will repeat itself every time, and it's pronounced like été, été. All right. So j'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été. So here double liaison. Nous avons été. Vous avez été, same thing here, double, double liaison, vous avez été. Ils ont été, so same thing here, you get first the liaison z, and then you get the t, ok? Ils ont été, alright? Ils ont été, elles ont été. Ok? I hope it was clear. Uh, if you want more videos, then uh, youtube.com slash imagier, and then if you want to send me a little message and... Um, Check more things, more material. It's here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. La forme passive. So it's quite important. Take the time to relax and we'll start right now. So I wanted to put an example. Simple sentence. Okay, here. We've got Jean mange une pomme. Okay. So Jean, that's the name of the person. Mange, manger, to eat, and it's the present form. Une pomme, an apple. Okay, so if we have a look at this sentence, of course, Jean is the subject of the sentence. Then we get mange, manger, so it's the verb. Okay, then we'll have une pomme, so that's what we call Complément d'objet direct. I know it's a bit scary. So, complément, just because it will complete the sentence, it will give more information. Okay. Then, objet direct. So, objet, it's not because it's uh, an apple. Okay. It could be a person. It's uh, grammatically, it's an object. Okay. So, and then direct, just because between your verb and this complément, you don't have any preposition. Okay, so normally we tend to write it like that, C-O-D, okay, complément d'objet direct, all right? And then, if you think about the sentence, 
normally, when you've got a sentence like that, so Jean mange une pomme, well, the important thing in this sentence is the subject. Okay? For one good reason, it's just because we start with it. And as it's here in the first place, well, we tend to think that this is the m most important thing of the, of the sentence. Okay? So, if we would like to put the focus on le complément d'objet direct. So, if we would like to have une pomme as the main thing of the sentence. Okay? So, it would be actually the whole idea of this form passive. Okay? So, what could we do? We could first take une pomme, okay, and then, of course, put it in the first place, because, well, the focus will be on the first word or first thing that will come in the sentence. Then, we take Jean, and then, of course, Jean is not coming right after, because the verb should come between, between the two. So, it will be here, okay, and after that, Manger, so the verb mange here, should be transformed. And that's the whole thing of the passive form, okay? You will have to use être, so you will have to conjugate être, plus le participe passé of your verb, okay? In that case, it's quite easy because manger belongs to the first group of verbs, so regular verbs, and then when we talk about the participe passé form, it will be manger like that with the accent on the top of the e uh, here. Okay, so let's have a look how it will go. Une pomme est, so the verb être at the present form because here we've got a sentence at the present form manger okay so as i said you've got this uh, accent aigu okay and the important thing here is that because we construct this passive form with être then we should at the end of the participe passé add something if it's feminine or if it's plural in that case une pomme an apple you can see here that it's feminine, une pomme. So we will add this e, uh, so the mark of the feminine. Okay, so une pomme est mangé, Jean. And obviously something is missing here, okay? And the thing that we will put or we will add to construct this passif will be par. All right, so now we've got this sentence, une pomme est mangée par Jean. And it's the passive form, okay? Forme active, Jean mange une pomme. Forme passive, une pomme est mangée par Jean. All right? Let's take another example. I changed, I did, I did put this la pomme instead of une pomme, but well, technically it's the same. The important thing is that this passive form will be, I mean, it will be possible to make it at the present form or even at the future, at the passé composé, at the imparfait, because the only thing that will change will be être, okay? So in that case, Example for le présent, Jean mange la pomme. You change it and you get la pomme est mangée par Jean. Okay, so that's the one we saw, so it's actually quite easy. But then now, let's see if we've got le futur. So, the sentence will go like Jean mangera, okay, so it's this will eat, okay, la pomme. And then, if you want to put this sentence at the passive form, then la pomme sera, so remember, sera, it's the form of être at the future, okay? So that's the only thing that will change. So you definitely should know by heart all the form 
of Etre and obviously avoir, but I mean not avoir for this lesson, but still. So you should know them by heart because you will have to use them. Uh, for instance, in this uh, passive form, you, you, you must use them. So la pomme sera mangée par Jean. So the rest doesn't change. I mean, that's the only thing that you will have to change. You put this être form okay, at the correct tense. In that case, it's the future. And then let's see le passé composé now. Jean a mangé la pomme. Okay, and then if you... Well, change it and put it at the passive form. So, la pomme a été, remember this a été, is the passé composé form of être, okay? Mangé par Jean. The rest doesn't change, okay? So, let's have a look at the conditionnel présent because we saw it already in the previous unit. Jean mangerait. La pomme, okay, would eat, okay, si, mangerait la pomme. So if you change it, la pomme serait, okay, and that's the conditionnel present form of être, mangé par Jean. Okay, then imparfait, Jean mangeait la pomme, la pomme était mangée par Jean. And the last one, conditionnel passé, because that's the last one we saw. Jean aurait mangé la pomme, la pomme aurait été, and that's here, aurait été conditionnel passé form of être mangé par Jean. Okay? So remember, être, then participe passé, then par. Don't forget this part because it's, uh, it's quite important. La conjugaison à la forme passive. So we saw la forme passive in the previous video lesson, so I definitely advise you to watch it if you didn't do it. Uh, and then in this lesson we'll take a few examples, or at least two examples, two verbs, and then we'll see how they, how they go, okay? So remember uh, that we'll see in this lesson le présent, le futur, le passé composé, le conditionnel présent, and then l'imparfait. These are the verbs that we already covered in these lessons or in the previous lessons, okay? So that's the reason why we will try to see how they go at the passive form, all right? So remember that if, we, if you want to construct this uh, form of passive, then the first thing will be être. And this verb, être, will be changed. So according to the fact whether it's present, futur, passé composé, etc. And then after that, you will put this participe passé form, okay, to get your passive form. All right, so that's it. We'll take two examples. The first one will be admirer, to admire. And then the second one will be choisir, to choose, okay. But then the idea is that as we will change them in or at this uh, form passive so clearly it will be to be admired and to be chosen okay so let's see now admiré présent so it will be je suis admiré tu es admiré il est admiré elle est admirée nous sommes admirés vous êtes admiré ils sont admirés Elles sont admirées. All right, so as you can see, être will be the only thing that will change here. All right. Well, if we are really honest, then we can say that the participe passé form here is changing as well. Because if you can see, if you have a look here, it's here like that written A. And then here you just add this E. Uh, okay. Remember that we add this Final uh, because we've got here a feminine subject, and so this final uh, is the mark of the feminine, so singular feminine. Okay, but then if you really want to think about that phonetically, you don't pronounce it. So whether it's masculine admire or feminine admire, you will pronounce them the same way. But still, if you want to write it correctly, you should add this. Uh, so same thing here, if we look at this last form here, we've got this S at the end, so S is the mark of the plural, so you should put it at the end, you don't pronounce it, okay, so you get admiré, but still you should put it. And here, 
you've got, well, first the feminine, E, uh, and then the plural, S. Phonetically, it is the same, admire. Okay, so you've got phonetically only one form, and it's admire. Okay, but then keep in mind that because we constructed with être here, then we should put the feminine here if the subject is feminine, the plural here if the subject is masculine plural here, and then the feminine plural here if the subject is feminine plural. Okay, so it will be the same for all the tenses. Okay, so I won't repeat that after. Okay, and then keep in mind that être, so the verb, will be the only thing that will change in this, I mean, these structures. All right, so let's see now the future. Je serai admiré. Tu seras admiré. Il sera admiré. Elle sera admirée. Nous serons admirés. Vous serez admirés. Ils seront admirés. Elles seront admirées. All right. So if we want to make this structure at the passé composé form, so j'ai été admiré. So you can see that here you get j'ai été. All right. So it's the verb être, to be, okay, but at the passé composé form. All right. Tu as été admiré. Il a été admiré. Elle a été admirée. Nous avons été admirés. Vous avez été admiré. Ils ont été admirés. Elles ont été admirées. All right. So if we want to make it the conditionnel present form, then we will get je serais admiré. Tu serais admiré. Il serait admiré. Elle serait admirée. Nous serions admirés. Vous seriez admirés. Il serait admiré. Elle serait admirée. Okay, so same thing here. If you look carefully, that's only the verb être that will change. And then imparfait form would be j'étais admiré. Tu étais admiré. Il était admiré. Elle était admirée. Nous étions admirés. Vous étiez admiré. Ils étaient admirés, elles étaient admirées. All right. So, clearly, it's not that difficult. The only thing that you should definitely remember by heart is the verb. It's the verb être at all the forms that we already covered. Okay. And then you will have to use it well clearly to make this uh, passive form. All right. So, the second verb that I wanted to uh, will introduce was uh, choisir. Okay. So, at the present form, it will go like, je suis choisi, tu es choisi, il est choisi, elle est choisi, nous sommes choisis, vous êtes choisis, ils sont choisis, elles sont choisis. So same thing here that we had for admirer. So remember that you will have to here, for example, put the E uh, at the end for the feminine, okay, because here we've got the feminine singular, so we just add E, uh, okay. You will have this S at the end here for the plural, so masculine plural, and you will have this ES uh, feminine plural form, okay. Same rule, you don't pronounce them, so phonetically you will have choisi, 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 choisi choisi and choisi so the same phonetical form okay and it's quite easy to remember je serai choisi tu seras choisi il sera choisi elle sera choisi nous serons choisis vous serez choisi ils seront choisis elles seront choisis okay let's see the passé composé form j'ai été choisi tu as été choisi il a été choisi elle a été choisie Nous avons été choisis, vous avez été choisis, ils ont été choisis, elles ont été choisis. Then the conditionnel present form, je serai choisi, tu serais choisi, il serait choisi, elle serait choisie, nous serions choisis, vous seriez choisis, il serait choisi, elle serait choisie. Ok, and last but not least, imparfait. J'étais choisi, tu étais choisi, il était choisi, elle était choisie, nous étions choisis, vous étiez choisis, ils étaient choisis, elles étaient choisies. La géographie. L'Europe. 
Okay, so I did put this F just to give you the information that it's feminine, okay, because it doesn't show here with the article. L'Europe, l'Asie, l'Afrique, l'Amérique du Nord, l'Amérique centrale, l'Amérique du Sud. Okay, so let's see them one more time. L'Europe, remember this final E, uh, it's not really present. It only gives you the possibility to pronounce this P, P, P at the end, okay? Europe. L'Asie, same thing here, final E is not pronounced. L'Afrique, same thing here, final E, it's only the K, K at the end that you will hear. L'Afrique, okay? Amérique, same thing as Afrique. Amérique du Nord, final D not pronounced. L'Amérique du Nord. L'Amérique centrale, same thing here, centrale, remember, E-N, nasal, so it goes in your nose, en, en, centrale, all right, l'Amérique centrale, l'Amérique du Sud, here you should pronounce the D, Sud, Sud, okay, l'Amérique du Sud, all right, so one more time, l'Europe, l'Asie, l'Afrique, l'Amérique du Nord, L'Amérique centrale, l'Amérique du Sud, l'Australie, l'Océanie, l'Antarctique, l'Eurasie, l'Océan Atlantique, l'Océan Pacifique. Ok, so let's see them one more time. L'Australie, final E uh, not pronounced. L'Océanie, final E uh, not pronounced. Remember, Q-U-E here, it's K, okay, so TIC. L'Antarctique, l'Antarctique. L'Eurasie, final E not pronounced. L'Eurasie, okay, same thing here for the IC, okay. L'Océan Atlantique, Atlantique, Atlantique. L'Océan Pacifique. L'océan Indien, l'océan Arctique, la mer du Nord, la mer de Chine, la mer des Antilles, la mer Méditerranée. Ok, so let's see them. L'océan Indien. So remember here it's nasal and it can be quite tricky. So first you've got this un here and then you've got this yin, yin. Ok Indien, l'océan Indien, l'océan Arctique, remember, tic, ic, la mer du Nord, final day not pronounced, la mer de Chine, remember, don't insist on the E, uh, Chine, ok, and then this CH, 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 Chine, alright, la mer des Antilles, So here it's quite interesting because, well, you've got this E and then double L, E, S, okay? So final S and E, really you don't pronounce them, so you get this E, E sound, Antilles, okay? La mer des Antilles, the liaison between the two, des Antilles. La mer des Antilles. La mer Méditerranée, okay? Here final E not pronounced, but then you pronounce this E at the end. Méditerranée, ok? La mer Méditerranée. La mer Rouge. La mer Caspienne. La mer Noire. La mer de Bering. Ok, so, la mer Rouge. Remember, G and then E, J, J. Rouge, ok? La mer Rouge. La mer Caspienne. Okay, E uh, and then double consonant here, and it's the same, N, N, so it does open the sound here, so it's E, E, Caspienne, Caspienne, okay, then here, La Mer Noire, same thing here that we had previously, final E uh, not pronounced, okay, and then O, E, remember, Wa, 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 Noire, Noire, La Mer Noire, okay, La Mer de Bering. La météo, so I hope it's okay with you. Let's start right now. La météo.
un nuage, une pluie, une goutte de pluie, un éclair, une brume, un brouillard. All right, so let's see them one more time. Un nuage, une pluie, une goutte de pluie. Un éclair, so you can see I make this little liaison between the two, un éclair, une brume, un brouillard, final day not pronounced, une rosée, un verglas, un ciel clair, un ciel couvert, un ciel nuageux, une bruine. So let's see them. Une rosée, final E not pronounced. Un verglas, final S not pronounced. Un verglas. Un ciel clair. Un ciel couvert, final T not pronounced. Un ciel couvert. Un ciel nuageux. This can be quite tricky, but take the time to nu a -je. Remember final E. X here not pronounced. Nu a je. Ok? Nuageux. Un ciel nuageux. Ok? Une bruine. Une pluie. Une neige. Une averse. Un orage. Un ouragan. Une averse de grêle. Une pluie, final E uh, not pronounced, une neige, une averse, so same thing here, un neige, final E uh, not pronounced, you only pronounce this J, same thing here, averse, ok, S is pronounced, the E uh, is not pronounced. Un orage, same thing here, J, ok, not the E. Uh. Un ouragan, so liaison here, like we had here as well. Une averse de grêle. All right. So I wanted to put them with the, the article un ou une to make it more clear. But it's uh, clear that in some cases, uh, well, you will have to use the instead of a. So le or la. Okay. Instead of un ou une. But it's it was just to make it more clear that I wanted to use only un ou une. And after that, you can decide whether you want to use uh, this article. Or the other one. Le climat. Okay, so it will be a short one, vocabulary one, but still it's quite interesting. Let's see that. Le climat. Le climat tropico. Le climat tempéré. Le climat polaire. Okay, so le climat tropico. So you can see that even if we've got the plural form here, S, we don't pronounce the S, and then we don't pronounce the T either. Le climat Tropico, final X not pronounced. Le climat tempéré, final S not pronounced, but then you should definitely pronounce the accent. Tempéré, okay? Le climat polaire, so same thing, same thing here, E uh, and S are not pronounced. Polaire, okay? Le climat continentaux, le climat subtropicaux, le climat de montagne. Les climats subarctiques. Okay, so les climats continentaux. Remember, final X not pronounced, and then this A, U together, they give you the sound O. Okay, les climats subtropicaux. Les climats de montagne. So remember here, O, N, on, mon, ta, and then this G, N, E, ny, ny. Montagne. All right. Les climats subarctiques. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon L. And in this lesson we'll discover together le plus que parfait. So it's uh, quite interesting, not that difficult and quite useful. So let's see what le plus que parfait is. So first in this video, as usual for the tenses because it's a past tense, we'll first 
discover together or see together l'utilisation. So when should we use le plus que parfait? And then how do we make, construct, build this tense? Okay, the first thing, utilisation. When do we use le plus que parfait? Important. If you want to... Well, should I... Yeah, I will read that the French way first, okay? Exprimer des faits qui se sont passés avant d'autres faits passés. Oh my God, it can be quite tricky. It's not really tricky. Let's say that if you want to resume or if you want to say it fast, le plus que parfait is the past in the past. Okay, so let's see. Now you've got the timeline here. Let's see first, second and third thing. The first one could be le présent, so we are here right now, okay? Then, this is the past, so if you want to express something that happened in the past, whether you use le passé composé or we saw that previously l'imparfait, okay? And then, you've got here le plus que parfait, okay? So, first, if you want to talk about what happened yesterday or then even years ago so you will have to use whether passé composé or imparfait okay but then if you want to make a relation to something that happened previously you should definitely use this plus que parfait form okay so that's the reason why we tend to say that it's the past in the past all right so Let's have an example. Ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau que tu avais préparé hier. Okay? If we have a look, we've got two verbs in this sentence. This is the first one, j'ai mangé. It is the passé composé form. This is the second one. Tu avais préparé. This is le plus que parfait. Ok. Passé composé. Plus que parfait. So, what do you want to say here? You want to say, ce matin, this morning, j'ai mangé, mangé is to eat, le gâteau, the cake, que, that, tu avais préparé, préparé is to prepare, yesterday, hier. Ok. So, you want to say that, ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau, Okay, so it happened in the morning, this morning, and then yesterday, you had prepared this cake. Okay, so that's the reason why in the second part of the sentence, you use le plus que parfait, because this action happened before. Alright, so it was the past in the past. Okay, so let's see now how to construct it. And it's not that difficult because first, if you have a look, so I did put some uh, regular verbs here, first one, je mangeais au restaurant. So this form here is the imparfait, okay? So why did I put the imparfait? Just for you to have a look at the ending of these verb. This is avoir, okay? So you can see that's the end actually the same way R E S R E S okay and then if you have a look here you've got manger manger so you can notice that this is the participe passé form of the verb manger manger is to eat okay so first you've got avoir then you've got the participe passé okay maybe it rings a bell for you uh, second example tu regardais la télévision okay Tu avais regardé la télévision. So if you have a look, well, it looks the same. You've got first avoir, then you've got participe passé here, okay? And then, so I took this verb aller. Aller is to go, and remember, when we've got these composed tenses, it's a bit tricky because it doesn't use avoir as most of the verbs, but it uses être and look here. It's the same. Il était allé. So it does use être here. And then we've got the participe passé form. All right. So 
the rule is that if you want to construct this plus que parfait form, then you should use first avoir at the imparfait, then the participe passé, and you will get your plus que parfait form. Okay? In some cases, you will use être at the imparfait form, then the participe passé, and you will get le plus que parfait. Okay, we've been covering already few composed tenses in French, and well, it it does follow exactly the same rules. Okay, so that's the reason why it will be quite familiar for you because the following verbs: aller to go, arriver to arrive, descendre to go down, devenir to become, entrer to enter to come in, monter to go up. Mourir, to die, naître, to born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fell, to fall, sorry, and then venir, to come. So all these verbs will use être, as I mean they do for all the other composed tense that we saw, uh, like passé composé, for instance. Okay, and then all the verbes réfléchis or reflexive verbs like se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter. So all these verbs will also require être. Okay, for the plus que parfait. Okay, so let's see one more time the imparfait form of avoir and être as well, but we'll start with avoir, just because that's the form, I mean, these are the forms that you will have to use when you want to construct this plus que parfait. So it goes like, j'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, and then for être, j'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, Ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so you can see here that we've got this A-I-S ending and A-I-T ending. You pronounce them the same way, okay? J'avais, tu avais, il avait. And then you saw probably that we've got also here A-V-A-I-E-N-T, but then you pronounce it avait. So the same way as we pronounce here, okay? J'avais, tu avais, il avait. Nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient. Okay? The only difference is that you will have to make the liaison between the two. Elles avaient, ils avaient. Okay? Same thing here. Était, était, était. And the last one, était. So you pronounce them the same way. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. All right? So, remember that for these participe passé form, so the second part that you should have, okay? Um, when we're talking about uh, verbs, so in French we've got three groups, okay? The first one is the er verbs, so verbs ending with er, only one exception, and it's aller, but then the good news is, is that aller will behave the same way, so it won't be tricky. So remember that when you've got a verb like parler, for instance, here, Parler is to talk or to speak. It ends with a er, okay? You will take this a er away and you will replace it with a accent aigu, parler. Same thing, regarder to watch. You take this a er away and you put this e here. Aller, even if it doesn't belong to the first group, it will behave the same way, so that's a good news. Aller, a er, you take it away and then you put this a, okay. Second group of verbs, er. Unfortunately for you, not all the er verbs, okay. But then these are from the second group. Choisir to choose. You take this er away, and then you change it. You put e instead. Choisi. Finir to finish to end. Er away. Same rule. And then you put fini. Unir. Er. You take it away to unite. And then you get uni. 
okay after that when we talk about the third group it's quite tricky and my advice would be to try to learn them by heart like in many languages but still we have some sub groups okay so you've got a list here so the one that will end with u for instance connaître to know être will become u connu all right voir to see voir will become u vu partir well in that case they will have this e even if it ends with er uh, it's not from the second group it's from the third group okay so but then it becomes parti okay so quite easy rire will become ri okay partir to leave and then rire to laugh it like écrire to write ire will become it here dire to say ire will become it okay remember you put this t you don't pronounce it écrit D. All right. And then the last subgroup here, or I think it's the last, I'm not sure about that anymore. <laughs> Maître, E, T, T, R, E will become E, S. Me, same advice here. Don't pronounce the final S like we had here. T is not pronounced. S is not pronounced. Me, uh, Maître, to put. And then prendre, prendre is to take, okay. E, N, D, R, E, and it will become E, S, pris. All right. An example for parler, so parler will go like that for the plus que parfait. J'avais parlé, tu avais parlé, il avait parlé, elle avait parlé, nous avions parlé, vous aviez parlé, ils avaient parlé, elles avaient parlé. Okay, so if you look carefully, I did put this E uh, in orange just to show you that when you construct I mean, a normal structure or simple structure like subject, verb, okay, nothing in between. Then, if you have avoir, you don't put anything at the end. So, you don't need to add this e for the feminine or s for the plural. Just keep your participe passé like that. If you construct it with avoir. But, have a look here. Aller, you write it like that, aller. This is the masculine singular form, so basic form. Feminine singular form, you will have to add this E uh, for the feminine. Masculine plural form, you will have to add this S for the plural. And then here, feminine plural form, you will have to add this E, uh, S, so, E uh, for the feminine and S for the plural. The good news is that phonetically they go the same way. Aller, 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 aller. All right? But if you want to write correctly, remember to put E uh, for the feminine, S for the plural, and obviously E, uh, S for the feminine plural. Okay? So, let's see aller now. J'étais allé. Tu étais allé. Il était allé. Elle était allée. Nous étions allés. Vous étiez allés. Ils étaient allés. Elles étaient allées. All right, so you can hear that here, for instance, I make here a liaison. Ils étaient, and then here I make a liaison as well. Ils étaient allés. Elles étaient allées. All right, and then remember, aller, 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 and then. Allez, so the same phonetical form, okay? If you want to construct this plus que parfait, so I took this example with a verbe réfléchi, okay? Je m'étais présenté, tu t'étais présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présentée, nous nous étions présentés, vous vous étiez présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présentée. All right, so remember, all these reflexive verbs, so les verbes réfléchis, will require all the time être, okay? Remember, avoir at the imparfait form, and then participe passé, and you will get a beautiful plus que parfait, and in some cases, être at the imparfait form, plus participe passé, will give you another beautiful plus que parfait. 
that was it, that was it for the plus que parfait uh, if you want more videos then youtube.com slash imagier and then the website is here imagier.net have a great day bye bye Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon M. And in this lesson we'll work on les pronoms relatifs. So pronounce, um, one more time, yes, because we, we've got quite many pronouns in French and we use them quite often, okay? But in that case we're going to work on les pronoms relatifs and we'll see first qui, then que, after that, don, and finally, ou. Okay, so the first one that will work with will be qui. Okay, so pronounce, as usual, are these little words that you use to avoid repetition if something was already said, or if you want to, in one sentence, combine two different sentences. Okay, so the first one, qui, normally we use it because it's subject, okay? So it can be whether for a person or a thing, pour une personne ou une chose, okay? And then the first examples that we saw, we'll see, sorry, will be for une personne, okay? So, qui? So if we take this example, the first one, first sentence, nous connaissons un homme. Okay, connaître is to know. Nous connaissons un homme. And then we've got the second sentence. Cet homme travaille dans un restaurant. Okay, so it's totally possible to have these two sentences like that. Okay, but then if you look carefully, we repeat cet homme or un homme. Okay, we've got here cet homme. Okay, and it's here in the first sentence as well. Let's imagine that we would like to combine these two sentences, make one and just avoid repeating here, un homme or cet homme. In that case, well, we will use this pronoun relatif, okay? We will use this qui just because if you look carefully in the second sentence here, cet homme travaille dans un restaurant, well, Cet homme here is subject of the verb. And that's the reason why we'll use qui. Okay? So it could be a person, like in that example, okay? Cet homme, but it could be also an object or a thing. Okay? So the sentence you will get will be this one. Nous connaissons un homme qui, and that's where you put your pronom relatif, Travaille dans un restaurant. Okay? So it is quite easy to make. It's not that difficult. You just need to remember that it should come well before the verb here. All right? And then we've been choosing this key just because it is the subject of the verb. All right? So let's see now the same sentence. Nous connaissons un homme. But then here, if you look, cet homme a travaillé dans un restaurant. So here we've got the passé composé form here. You remember, you put avoir first and then you put here your pa participe passé form. All right. So of course, cet homme, we would like to avoid repeating this one. So we'll get this sentence. Nous connaissons un homme qui a travaillé dans un restaurant. So basically it is quite simple because uh, it doesn't change that much. You only need to use again one more time this pronoun relative qui, okay, before the verb. So keep in mind that even if you've got two forms here, it's only one verb, okay? It's composed. You've got first avoir and then participe présent, uh, sorry, participe passé. But still it's only one verb here. So that's the reason why qui should come before, okay? And then we'll see a third example. Nous connaissons un homme. Cet homme va travailler dans un restaurant. Okay, so in that case, what do we have here? We've got a second sentence in which we've got this is going to work. Okay, so va it's aller. Okay, so that's what we call futur proche. Okay, so 
this man, cet homme, is going to work, va travailler. All right? So, of course, same thing here. We don't want to repeat cet homme or un homme. Okay? So, we will get this. Nous connaissons un homme qui va travailler dans un restaurant. All right? So, just before the verbs here. All right? So, it's quite simple. Okay? Let's see now if we replace une chose, a thing. Okay? With qui. So, je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge, ok? Regardez to watch, une voiture, a car, je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge. So, of course, in that case, we would like to avoid the repetition of une voiture, ok? And then, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge, all right? So, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge. So, exactly the same thing here. You just put this qui, and then you get the verb after, uh, after that, est rouge. All right? Let's see the same sentence, but then let's put here the par, uh, passé composé. J'ai regardé une voiture. Cette voiture était imparfait rouge. Okay? J'ai regardé une voiture. Cette voiture était rouge. So, same thing here. We don't want to repeat voiture, then we will get the simple sentence, j'ai regardé une voiture qui était rouge. So just before the verb. Let's put that at the future. So, je vais regarder une voiture. So I am going to watch une voiture. Okay. Cette voiture sera, so here you get the real future, what we call futur simple, okay, is, so it's uh, will be, uh, sera rouge. Exactly the same thing, we don't want to repeat une voiture, so, je vais regarder une voiture qui sera rouge. Alright, so it's really simple, you should keep in mind that first, first thing, well, of course you get to spot the, the, the word you want to replace, and if it is subject like we have here, then you should put qui. So whether it's a person or an object or a thing, so it will be qui, just because it's the subject of the sentence. Okay? And you have to put it here before the verb. Okay? Now we'll have a look at que. Okay? So que, you should remember that it will replace what we call complément d'objet direct. So, complément, it's because it will complete the sentence. Objet, because it's what we call grammatical object. Okay? And then, direct, just because we don't use or we won't use any preposition between the verb and this grammatical object. Okay? And then, normally, we tend to write it shortly, C-O-D. Okay, so if you see this COD written somewhere, it's just because we want to say complément d'objet direct. Okay, and then the same thing will work first with the person, so example with persons, and then chose things, and then let's start now. So que, c'est l'acteur, tu admires cet acteur. Okay, so in that case, of course, if we look carefully, we would like to avoid repeating Acteur, because it's in the first sentence and then it is in the second sentence as well. But if you have a look here, in the second sentence, you've got tu, okay, so it's the subject. Then you've got admir, so it's the verb admirer, to admire, all right. And after that, you've got cet acteur, so the thing we would like to replace, okay. And then if we look carefully, so... What we saw is that cet acteur is, well, first it's a complement, okay? It will complete the, the, the subject and the verb. Then it is what we call grammatical object, and if you look carefully between admirer and cet acteur, we don't have anything, so we don't have any preposition. So it does mean that it is direct, direct, okay? In that case, we should use que, all right? So let's look at... The sentence now, c'est l'acteur que tu admires. All right, so you first put back your first sentence here, c'est l'acteur. Then you put this pronom relatif que, and then the sentence continues, tu admires, subject, verb. Okay, 
Now let's have a look at the same thing, but at the feminine. C'est l'actrice. Tu admires cette actrice. Okay, so exactly the same sentence, but it's the feminine form. C'est l'actrice. Tu admires cette actrice. Okay, we don't want to repeat actrice, obviously. Then we get c'est l'actrice que tu admires. All right. So same concept, same structure, no problem. So let's see now with une chose, a thing. Okay. C'est la voiture. Tu adores cette voiture. Okay. And then obviously we don't want to repeat la voiture. Okay. Adorer, to adore. Tu adores cette voiture. C'est la voiture que tu adores. All right. So same concept. You first put que here. Then subject verb. Okay? Be careful. And be careful at the passé composé form. Why? Well, look, normally when we construct a sentence, we first start with the sujet. Then we've got the verb. Then we've got so what we saw complement d'objet direct. Okay? And normally when we introduce the Passé composé form, we say that if we use avoir, normally you don't have to put anything at the end of your participe passé form, so you don't need to mark the feminine form or the plural or the feminine plural. Okay? But then when we've got this special structure with first le pronom relatif COD, so what we just saw, this que. Before the verb, the rule will be that you will have to put the feminine or the plural or the feminine plural at the end of your participe passé. So let's have a look first and it will be quite easy because it is here. Have a look. C'est l'acteur. Tu as admiré cet acteur. So here you've got the passé composé form. Okay. But then it's the masculine. So normally it shouldn't be a problem if we look the sentence. C'est l'acteur que tu as admiré. All right. So we've got this que, pronom relatif, complément d'objet direct. So I told you that if, it, if it's before the verb, at the passé composé form, it can be tricky. But in that case, it's the masculine form. So it doesn't change anything at the end of your Participe passé form here. That's the reason why it doesn't change here. If you look carefully, it's the same form. Okay? But if we take now the feminine form, c'est l'actrice, tu as admiré cette actrice. We want to replace actrice, then we will have c'est l'actrice que, so the structure doesn't change at all. Tu as admiré. The only thing that you will have to put is this E, uh, which is the mark of the feminine, at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay? The good news is that phonetically, here, you don't pronounce it. Okay? But in some cases, you will have some participe passé ending with maybe or something like that and then if you put the feminine form you will have to pronounce it okay so it's really important to remember that with this kind of structure when you've got this pronom relatif and then the que complément d'objet direct at the passé composé form and you've got the feminine form you will have to add a at the end of your participe passé here okay if We've got the plural, like here. So, masculine, but then the plural form. Ce sont les acteurs. Tu as admiré ces acteurs. Okay, so we just don't want to repeat les acteurs. Ce sont les acteurs que tu as admiré. And then have a look here. We've got the mark of the plural, and it's S at the end. Okay, so same thing as usual in French. You don't pronounce it, okay, but it's really important to remember that you should put at the end of your participe passé here the S. Okay? If we have like here the feminine plural form, 
ce sont les actrices. Tu as admiré ces actrices. Ok. We don't want to repeat les actrices. Then, ce sont les actrices que tu as admiré. Ok. So remember here, admiré. Well, first you've got this E, mark of the feminine. Then you've got this S at the end, mark of the plural. Ok. Phonetically, you don't pronounce it. But still, remember, you get to put it. Okay, a uh, S. So as I said, you know, for this admiré, adoré, all these examples that we've been covering so far, you don't pronounce it. So that's the reason why I wanted to put few sentences in which, well, you'll see that you can see the difference. So the first one, c'est le camion que tu as conduit. Ok, le camion, it's the truck, ok, que tu as conduit, conduire is to drive, ok, and you get here the passé composé form, ok. So in that case, of course, we've been using this pronom relatif, que, ok, and it's complément d'objet direct, alright. It is before the verb tu as conduit, here, so normally it does mean that the rule, well, tells us to, 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 to put something at the end of the participe passé, if it's the feminine, or if it's the plural, or feminine plural. In that case, we've got le camion, so we don't put anything at the end of conduit. We just leave conduit like that. Okay? But if we put, well, the same sentence, but at the plural. In that case, ce sont les camions que tu as conduit. Okay? You will have this S. You don't pronounce it, but it will be here. Now, the feminine. So we take la voiture. The car, ok, la voiture, it's feminine. C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. And that's when you hear the difference between conduit, because remember, final T is not pronounced, conduit, here, and then the feminine, conduite. Ok, so here you can listen to this t, t ok, conduite. Right? C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. Okay, and then the same thing for the plural, so it will be feminine plural because it's les voitures. Ce sont les voitures que tu as conduites. All right, so that's the reason why it's quite important to remember this rule, even if in most of the cases you won't pronounce the difference between your participe passé, whether it's at the masculine, the feminine, or the plural form. But in some cases, like, well, these examples, You can hear the difference between at least here the masculine and the feminine form. Okay? And then the last thing, tricky thing <laughs> with que, is if you put something after and it's not with a vowel. So remember, as usual in French, when we've got this uh and something after, so a vowel, they don't really get along. So the rule is that you should take. Uh, away, ok, so it will go like that, so, c'est la boisson que il demande, so normally if we, if we respect the rule, you know, we should put this que pronoun, ok, but then, as I showed, they don't really get along, as usual, and so que or e uh, should disappear, so you get the final structure, c'est la boisson qu'il demande. Now, let's have a look at don, okay? And the important thing with don is that you will use this don instead of complément avec préposition de, all right? So, the important thing here is that, so it should be com un complément, so something that will complete the sentence, so coming after the verb, all right? And then it should be introduced with this préposition de here, all right? So, let's have a look. And, well, as we did previously, so we'll first start with the person, and then after that, une chose, a thing. Voici l'homme, tout le monde parle de cet homme. Okay, so, voici l'homme, here is the man, okay, so even if it, well, it looks a bit strange to have a short sentence like that, okay, but still it was for the example, so I thought it might be useful. And then, tout le monde, tout le monde, everybody, everyone, parle, to talk, de cet homme. Okay, so the important thing here is to spot 
First, well, of course, we've got the subject here, tout le monde. Then we've got the verb, parler. Okay? Then if you look carefully between our complement here, set on, because that's the thing we don't want to repeat, and the verb, so between them, we've got the preposition de. Okay? And it tells us that if we don't want to repeat l'homme, okay, we will have to use this dont pronoun here. And the sentence will go like that. Voici l'homme, so the first one doesn't change. Dont, so you put here your pronoun relatif, then tout le monde parle. So you just put back what we've got, subject and verb. Okay, it's not really difficult. Then if we put the same structure but then at the passé composé form, Voici l'homme, tout le monde a parlé de cet homme, so same thing, we don't want to repeat l'homme, okay. Voici l'homme, dont, so same position, tout le monde a parlé. Okay, so it doesn't change anything, you just put it, but then, well, the tense is, uh, is different here, because it's passé composé. Okay, so let's see now, if we would put the same sentence, but then at the... Future proche, so near future. Normally I tend to put this structure just because it means that you've got two verbs here, okay, just to see. So l'homme is the thing we don't want to repeat. So voici l'homme dont tout le monde va parler. Okay, so it doesn't change anything. It should be here and then the sentence continues. Let's see if we want to replace une chose, a thing, then... Je n'aime pas le livre. Nous nous servons de ce livre. Okay, so aimer is to like. In that case, you've got the negative form. Je n'aime pas le livre. Okay, nous nous servons. Okay, so in that case, I wanted to use this se servir. Se servir is to use something, but it's se servir, so it's a reflexive verb. Okay, de ce livre. And then you can see that we've got ce livre. Okay. We've got the verb here, and between the two, we've got the preposition de. So it does tell us that if we don't want to repeat le livre, we will have to use this pronoun relatif, dont. So the sentence will be, je n'aime, sorry, I forgot the pas, <laughs> je n'aime pas le livre, dont nous nous servons. All right, so remember, you should put the pas. <laughs> I forgot to write it, sorry. Je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons. Okay, and then, où, okay, the last one for this lesson. Où, well, you've got two options. Whether you will use this où to replace what we call complément de lieu. Lieu is a place, okay, or then you will use it to replace un complément de temps, okay, temps, time. Let's see first if we want to replace complément de lieu, okay. So, je vous présente la ville, je suis né dans cette ville, okay. So, je vous présente, présenter, to present, la ville, la ville is the town, Je suis né, I was born, dans cette ville. Okay, so in that case, well, have a look. You've got cette ville and la ville. So probably that's the thing we don't want to repeat. Okay, and then here we get dans, so it's in. Okay, so you know that it's a place. All right, so it's what we could call or what we call complément de lieu. So it's a place. All right, so if you want to avoid repeating la ville, then you will have to use this ou pronom, and the sentence will go like that, je vous présente la ville, okay, so your first sentence doesn't change at all, ou, so you put your pronom here, and then je suis né, the rest continue, okay, like that, okay, and then let's have another, another situation when we want to replace Un complément de temps, okay, so it's not, it will, it won't be a place, but it will be something with the time, so, où, c'est l'année, okay, année it's year, c'est l'année, il a fait très froid cette année, okay, so you can see here, well, you've got the, this passé composé form, okay, faire froid when it's cold, 
okay so it was called or set année and then well obviously we don't want to repeat année because it's here and it's here okay and in that case well you tend to use set année just to indicate the time or when it was okay so c'est l'année où il a fait très froid all right so quite simple first part doesn't change then you put your pronoun ou then the sentence continues like that il a fait très froid all right a few other examples for this time concept because normally obviously in many cases people tend to think that ou it's only for a place so that's the reason why i thought it might be useful to give you few examples just to, to see uh, how to use it. So the first one, for instance, c'est le jour, le jour de day, c'est le jour où elle est venue. Okay, venir is to come. C'est le jour où elle est venue. Second example, ils arrivent le jour où tu seras absente. Okay, arriver to arrive, sera, so remember, it's the verb être, to be, okay, but it's the uh, the future form. Tu seras absente. Absente. You won't be here. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir. Le moment, the time, où le bébé, the baby, va dormir, is going to sleep. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir. Okay? So, I know it was long, but it was quite important. So, if you're not really sure about the use, don't be afraid to watch the video one more time. If you want more videos, then the YouTube channel is here, youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Les structures avec deux pronoms, and especially when one of them, so one of the pronouns, when you, you will use two pronouns, and one of them will be En, okay, so it was introduced in a previous uh, video lesson. Okay, so we'll work on this lesson in this lesson on the pronoun en. Okay, and then next lesson will be with le la lait, the lesson after lui leur, and the last lesson regarding this topic with two pronouns will be with the pronoun i. Okay, so let's see now with en. So me or them m apostrophe te the apostrophe or then lui se or s apostrophe nous vous leur and se or s apostrophe will be placed before en okay so that's the rule en will come after me or m apostrophe te or t apostrophe lui se or s apostrophe nous vous leur or se or s apostrophe okay so that's the way it will go so en is coming after okay so we'll see a few examples and then i thought it might be useful to put well the examples at the present form so le présent and then passé composé because if you remember correctly this uh, passé composé is uh, what we call a composed tense and then the future proche so this near future structure that we've got and uh, normally you you make it with the verb aller and then your verb at the infinitive and it's quite interesting because in that case well it gives you two verbs okay so the question is how do you put your pronouns when you've got two verbs in your sentence okay so let's see now the present mon ami me donne un conseil all right so mon ami my friend me donne the is to give un conseil an advice okay so let's say that we would like to replace un conseil in that case and then we saw in the previous lesson that un conseil could be replaced with en okay and so mon ami me, so it should be before, if you remember what we saw previously, so me should be in the first position, and then en should come right after, and then the verb, all right? But then if you remember, we've got this e uh, here, so me, and then en is starting with the vowel as well, so e uh, should go away. That's the reason why you will have this m apostrophe, so m'en donne un, all right? 
Second example, ta femme t'achète une montre. Ta femme, your wife, achetes to, to buy une montre, a watch. Okay? And then, of course, we would like to replace une montre in that case. We will use this en pronoun. Okay? And you get ta femme. So you get this te again, but then as it's with the vowel here, en, then e uh, needs to go away. Ton achète une. All right, so as we saw for the rule, first we get te, after that en is coming, and then we get the verb. Okay, then il nous apporte des fruits. Okay, so remember apporter is to bring des fruits, fruits. Okay, in that case we would like to replace des fruits, and so we will replace it with the pronoun en. Okay, il nous en Apport. All right, so nous first, then your pronoun en, then the verb. Okay? So let's see now with the passé composé. So, same sentence. Mon ami m'a donné un conseil. All right. Mon ami m'en a donné un. So it will be exactly the same thing, especially if you think that a donné, the thing that you see here. Okay, it's only one verb. Okay, so you've got two parts because it's composed. All right, so first you've got avoir and then you've got this participe passé form. Okay, but it's only one verb. All right, that's the reason why you put first your pronoun here, me, and then you put this second pronoun en before avoir. Okay, because this is the verb here. So you get mon ami m'en a donné un. Let's see now the same sentence that we had previously, but at the passé composé form. Ta femme t'a acheté une montre. Okay, so same thing here. Ta femme, so te should be here, but then, of course, with the vowel, you, we take away the e. En a acheté une. Ta femme t'en a acheté une. All right. And then, ils nous ont apporté des fruits. All right, same thing. Il nous en non apporté. All right, so nous first, then en, and after that you put your verb. So same rule here, it's composed, so you get two parts, but still it's only one verb here. So let's read it. Il nous en, okay, beautiful liaison here, <laughs> ont apporté. Okay, so the full thing goes like, ils nous en ont apporté. All right, so let's read it one more time. Mon ami m'en a donné un, ta femme t'en a acheté une, ils nous en ont apporté. All right. And then the last example we'll see with the future proche. So in that case, it will be quite interesting because we will have two verbs. Okay. So let's see. Mon ami va me donner un conseil. Okay. So exactly the same idea. We'll replace un conseil by en. And then we see how it goes. Mon ami... Va, all right, so here you've got this verb aller, all right, so the first verb here, and then you will put your pronouns. So, me here, of course, o is going away, then you've got your pronoun en before the second verb, okay, donner to give, that's the second verb here, infinitive form, as usual in French, when we've got two verbs, so, mon ami va, M'en donner un. All right. Ta femme va t'acheter une montre. Exactly the same rule. Ta femme va. So you've got first your verb here. Then te, but then e is going away. En. And the second verb. Acheter une. All right. Ils vont nous apporter des fruits. Ils vont nous en apporter. Okay. So that's the only thing that you should remember. So, when you've got one verb, whether it's simple or composed, then it is before the verb. When you've got two verbs like here, so with these first aller, then your verb, so donner here, remember that your pronouns will come before the second verb, okay? But then the order will stay 
the same. Les structures avec deux pronoms. And uh, if we are more precise, uh, if you've got one of these two pronouns, if it is le, la, or les. Okay, so we saw in the previous video the same concept. So when you've got two pronouns in the same sentence, but then one of them is en. Okay, so if you want to check it, then it is the previous uh, video. And then after that, we'll see lui, leur, and we we'll finally will work with y. Okay, but then in that video, we'll work on le, la, ou les. Okay, and then the rule is quite simple. If you've got first me, te, nous, vous, they will come first, and after that, you will put le, la, and les. Okay, that's the rule. If you've got le, la, and then les, it will come all the time after me, te, nous, and vous. Okay, let's see that more precisely. And so we'll work on présent, passé composé, because it's a composed tense, so it's quite interesting to see how you put this pronouns when you've got a composed tense. And then the futur proche, so this near future, so I am going to like in, in English, so aller plus infinitif, okay? It's interesting because in that case you've got two verbs, so we'll see how you put your pronouns when you've got the structure, the sentence, with two verbs, okay? So let's start now with the présent. So, mon père me conseille ce livre. Mon père, my father, conseillait to uh, advise or to recommend, in that case, ce livre, this book. So, we want to replace ce livre. We will put le. Okay, and as we saw for the rule, so, mon père, first me, then le, and after that, the word, uh, the verb, sorry. Mon père me le conseille. Okay, that's it. Quite simple, remember. Me first, then le, and then the verb. Second example. Tes amis, your friends, donnez to give, les clés, the keys. Okay? Tes amis nous donnent les clés. So, we want to replace les clés, so we should replace it with the plural form, so it's les, okay, here, les, and then remember, first nous, then les, and after that the verb. Tes amis nous les donnent. Okay? And the final Example, je me réserve, okay, so réserve it, reserve, la place de parking, so the parking place, la place de parking, in that case, we don't want to use la place de parking, we want to replace it with a pronoun, so je me la réserve, okay, remember, first me, then la, and after that your verb. Okay, so it's quite simple. It's not really difficult. Remember, uh, in that case, me, nous, me, here in the first place, then le, la for the feminine, les for the plural, second place, then the verb. Let's see how it will go with the passé composé form. So, passé composé, as you can see it in its name, it's a composed tense. Okay, so you've got two parts. First, you've got avoir, then you've got here participe passé. Okay, so, mon père m'a conseillé ce livre. Same thing, we don't want to use ce livre again, so we put the pronoun. Okay, so in that case, if you look carefully, then mon père me first place, then you should have le here, because it's the masculine form, but then you've got here a vowel after, so e uh, needs to go away, so you get l apostrophe. Mon père me l'a conseillé. All right. Then, tes amis nous ont donné les clés. So, exactly the same sentence that we had previously at the present form, but in that case, it's the passé composé form, okay? Tes amis nous les ont donné. Okay? So, same rule. First, nous, then les, before, and then after that, you put the verb here. So, you can see that I've been putting in red the ending here, just to... Uh, remind you or uh, yeah, let you remember that we've got a rule in French. Normally when we make this passé composé form with avoir like that and if you've got what we call complément d'objet direct before, you should put at the end of your 
participe passé forme here. Feminine if the word is feminine, so a. S if the word is plural, okay. In that case, we've got les clés. Les clés is feminine plural, so that's the reason why we will add first feminine and then plural here, okay. So the good news is that you don't pronounce it, so donner, okay. So whether it would be without this final a s or with. Uh, s, you will pronounce it the same way. Tes amis nous les ont donnés. Okay? And then the last one. Je me suis réservé la place de parking. Je me first, then la, and after that, suis réservé. Okay? So it doesn't really change that much if you think. First me, or then nous, as we saw, then le, or then la and les. And after that, you put your verb, even if, in that case, it's a composed verb, it doesn't change anything, you just put it before, okay? So let's see now how it will work with futur proche, so structure with two verbs. So, same example, mon père va me conseiller ce livre. And now you can see something interesting. You can see that me and le will be placed before the second verb. Okay, so mon père va, so you put first your verb, me le conseiller. Alright, so keep in mind that me and le should be before the second verb. Tes amis vont nous donner les clés. Tes amis vont nous les donner. Je vais me réserver la place de parking. Je vais me la réserver. All right, so the rule goes like that. Me, nous, me. So as here, we saw first place, then le, la, les, second place. All right, and after that, your second verb.